Hello and good evening to everybody. Thank you for joining me on Solomon's Temple. You're welcome. Hello once again to everybody. Thank you so much for joining me right here on Solomon's Temple. My name is Solomon Izang Ashams. On Solomon Temples, we get to look at issues, different issues in society affecting us. And then we zoom in to try to find God in that issue. That's what we do. So what we try to do is we try to look at the truth. So wherever you, you are getting, you know, you're, you're getting, you're, 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 you're watching from. Thank you so much. If this is your very first time. Uh, thank you for so much for joining us. Don't forget, you can subscribe on YouTube. Uh, my YouTube channel is Solomon Temple. Solomon's Temple. You can subscribe on YouTube and Solomon's Temple. I would appreciate that. And also, I would uh, love to to hear from you and uh, and to be able to discuss these issues. We're going to take about an hour to have the discussion. I hope it's not going to be more because of the the guests that we have to today to look at, you know, uh, who we are. This is all about who we are. We're trying to find God in every issue. This is a place where we, we don't condemn, where we don't, uh, this is not a court of law. This is a place where we discuss issues from biblical perspective. So we try to find God again in every single issue. And as you all know, today uh, I have a guest um who is with me i'm gonna introduce him for to some of you guys some of you guys that are not familiar with him uh you 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 just met him uh, my guest is uh jay israel all the way from durban as a lot of you are familiar with him some of you are here joining us today because you have been familiar with the work that he's been doing you know right from the time that he was in east london to the time that he moved to the city of Durban. Uh, and also we have been battling with his transformation. Is his transformation real or not? Is his repentance and confession real or not? It's not for me to judge, it's not for me to condemn, it's not for me to, uh, to, to, to give a verdict, but it's my role to ask a question. First, I'm a journalist and I'm a Christian. And by the way, I'm also an ordained pastor. For some of you guys who don't know, I don't put that out there. But is whatever I do here in, some, in Solomon's Temple is for the love of the church. It's for the love of the body of Christ. So, uh, and and it's a is 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 it was really good and really great uh, for him to be able to join us. Jay Israel, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, thank you so much, uh, Brother Saul. Um, it's a pleasure for me to be here. Uh, thank you for having me. Yes, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's also wonderful for us to, to, to be able to have you here. Before I, before I just proceed, actually, I want to read a scripture. The scripture is right there on the screen. 1 Corinthians 5.12. Okay. 1 Corinthians 5.12, it says, It isn't my responsibility to judge outsiders, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. certainly is your responsibility to judge those inside the church who are sinning. Those sure. inside the church who are sinning. So a lot of times we hear people say, thou shall not judge. You know, you're not supposed to judge other people. Uh, you're not supposed to, even Jesus, you know, told the, 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 the Pharisees, you know, uh, when he mm -hmm. was with, with a woman and said, look, if you are without sin, take the stone and 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 take any stone and, and, and stone her to death. And they didn't do that because they, they were in sin. The same people who were accusing her of adultery were living in adultery. So I wouldn't have the right, if I am a fake prophet, a false prophet, a fake pastor, I don't have the right to judge somebody who is a fake pastor or false prophet. Sure. Well, I want us to get that out of the way uh, for all those who are who are watching and listening. The fact that, is, that, that, that Jay Israel agreed to be on this platform, for me... It shows it's a lot of humility 
Um, and he's very familiar with me. He's very familiar with the kind of work that I do, you know. Uh, and in the course of the conversation, we're going to talk about that. Him and I had had issues. Let's get that out of the way. Him and I had had issues. People have asked me and, and, and attacked me on Facebook that I, I hate him, I dislike him. I'll tell you right here, and just so everybody will know, Jay Israel, I love you. Thank I you, love thank you, brother. So thank you. As much as I hate some of the things that you did, I dislike some of the things that you did, but by the love of God that has been in my heart, I don't have the right to hate you. And I sure. pray for you in my home. You know, people will be mm. shocked at, at, when I say that because whatever I do is from a place of love. And and I'm sure you, you know, the last few days you've been able to see my heart and be able to understand that. But sure. Sure. anyway, um, we're putting you on the hot seat today and we're looking at, <laughs> <laughs> we're looking at quite a bit of issues and we're going to be asking you some hard questions and we're going to be okay. asking you some we're going to be going down history, memory lane, uh, mm -hmm. to be able to excavate and 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 to be able to uh, to get some truth. Because there's a lot okay. of people who are out there who are still not comfortable with your repentance. You know, mm -hmm. some of them because they were personally hurt. There are people that are in pain, and some of your actions, some of the 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 work that you did in East London left them with a lot of pain. Uh, some of them can cannot come to a place where they 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 understand that you know, uh, it's time for forgiveness. And and yes. also there are people who are asking, is your repentance really real? Did you just rebrand yourself? Myself in mm -hmm. particular, you know, uh, did you just rebrand yourself? Did you just try to change yourself around and, and continue what you're doing? I remember, I think it was in, in September, 19th September, 2019, last year, I yeah, sent you, yeah. I, I sent you an inbox on Facebook. Yes, yes. Yes. You know, and I've never spoken to you before then. I asked and I said, uh, you have been doing a series on sex in the church. Mm -hmm. And I said, rather the way you tackle it is very important. And I mm -hmm. hope that, you know, God's purity would, would really consume you and God's purity would really be uh, a part of your life. And you replied, you know, uh, and, and, and you, and we spoke a little bit, you told me where you are and I, and I, understood where you are and you said pray for me and you said look solomon i used to see you as an enemy of the church enemy of pastors and prophets uh but uh you know that this is totally something different but yeah. we're just gonna go straight into it i'm gonna ask the question you okay. provide answers but we're gonna a lot of people don't know who you are yeah yeah right so let's start from who you really are outside of your pastoral calling who are you you know where were you born how old are you uh what's your real name uh, just some background information family background information about you uh well thank you thank you so much so um thank you solomon uh you know i i, I appreciate um i appreciate you for you know for for having me on your uh on your broadcast uh, I, I think you are actually one of the first people, or rather one of the first watchmen, uh, to get in touch with me ever since um, I started this journey uh, that I took. It, it has been it has been a very difficult one, uh, but God, by, but by God's grace, um, you know, uh, God is carrying me through. So uh, it was it was a bit uh, um, difficult for me to get to where i am here today and all that because of uh you know different attacks from people but uh, uh, we'll talk about that later but yeah. uh basically yeah um my name is jay israel uh, and I'm, I'm 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 gonna try and explain uh the name part because you've been one of the people who've been really coming up with uh, no that's not your real name you know <laughs> the, actually my my real name is jacob uh, my surname is Dube, so I'm Jacob Dube. That is my, uh, yeah, my name and my surname. And uh, that name was given to me. Uh, I was named after my father, <clears throat> Jacob. Uh, uh, the name Jacob was my father's name. And uh, my father comes from a very um, highly spiritual uh, uh, family, although he's late now. May his soul rest in peace. Um, he comes from a very highly spiritual family. So I believe that. Um, 
when they named me after him, they probably wanted me to take over uh, some of the spiritual uh, stuff from, from his family, which I never really uh, got myself into. So, when you say spiritual, what do you mean? Uh, he comes from a, a traditional family, uh, like like ancestral worship and all that. Yeah, so that is my name. That's my real name, Jacob Dube. So when I say I'm J, J is a shortcut for Jacob. It's, it's like saying soul. Uh, uh, high soul, high J, it, 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 it's a shortcut for, uh, for Jacob. So uh, I was born on the 18th of December, 1992. That makes me 27 years um, of age, and I'll, I'll be turning 28 uh, in December. This coming December, I'll be turning 28. I was born and bred in uh, in Zimbabwe, in Blawayo, in a township called Pomola. Uh, I was uh, raised uh, by my mom, a very strong woman, very uh, strong Christian woman, uh, whom I love so much. You know, uh, she played a very huge role very spiritual woman she's actually a a, a, a prophetess so uh, i used to travel with her whenever she would go and pray for people but she was on the white garment side although now she's um she 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 she, she gave her life to christ and then now she's um she's in the pentecostal church so uh, that's that's me i grew up in pomula south uh, i went to school uh, uh, um, my first primary school i went to a school called machaeskova uh, which is in a place called Luveve. Those who are from Zimbabwe are quite familiar with the names that I'm uh, dropping. So then from there, uh, I moved to another school called uh, Dumezweni Primary School to finish off my primary uh, uh, studies. And then after that, uh, I finished off my grade seven. I came out with uh, about six units. That means I was very intelligent and very bright, just so you know, uh, Solomon. <laughs> Yeah, so, um, but unfortunately, because uh, the relationship between my parents was not too good, my father was always in and out, in and out. He was not stable in terms of, uh, you know, the relationship that they had with my mom. So, unfortunately, I had to drop out from school. Uh, I, 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 I went, then when I dropped out from school, um, I started uh, hanging out with some friends, and then we had to travel, went to Botswana. At a very, very young age, we did a cross border. We crossed uh, uh, the border, illegal uh, um, uh, illegal uh, immigrants. Uh, uh, I was an illegal immigrant. We crossed over to Botswana without passport. I think I was about uh, 11 or 12 years, somewhere there, 11 years mm -hmm. or so. Uh, then we crossed into Botswana. Things were tough. We stayed in, this, uh, 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 in the bush because we were afraid. We didn't have anywhere to go. In Francis Town. Then from Francis Town, we moved to uh, 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 Gaboron. I was there. Then things didn't work out. I'm just going to try and paraphrase everything so that I don't take too much time. Then things didn't work out. I had to uh, travel back. I had to uh, uh, try and I, I tried to get myself deported by the cops because things were not working out. So I try. I, I handed myself over to the cops. Then they deported me back to um, back to Zimbabwe. So when they took me back to Zim. Uh, my mom spoke to my elder sister, the firstborn in our family, that, hey, Jay is here, please uh, take her and uh, uh, take him, take him un uh, under your wing, try to get him to go back to school because he's still young and stuff like that. So my sister took me in, and that was the time when I gave my life to Christ. All right. You know, we're yeah, going to... That was the time. Yeah, we're beginning again. to... We're beginning to get questions on people just commenting, so I'm going to be okay, posting okay. it up there for you to see. Some people are finding it unbelievable that you are 27. Well, in case I you're know. finding it unbelievable that he's 27, I mm -hmm. personally have a copy of his Zimbabwean passport, mm -hmm. uh, so mm -hmm. I can confirm that you know that that he is indeed um, a young lad, and uh, God has you got you know that that's uh, that's the way God created him. He's uh, not taking that, so that's something yeah. that's verified. Yeah. Just so uh, you, you know. Now, let's move to your calling. When did you yes. feel, coming from that kind of background, where yeah. there's a lot of um, uh, spiritual presence, you know, in yeah. your family, yeah. Yeah. your mom to, to your dad, though from a different, uh, you so, know, angle. Uh, when did you feel the call, you know, first to get safe, and secondly, mm -hmm. the call to go into becoming a pastor? Um, I gave my life to Christ when I was 13 years old. And um, 
the moment I gave my life to Christ, I remember very well that uh, at that time, um, because of my association with friends and the people that I used to hang out with, um, I, I got into uh, uh, I got into drugs. I got, I started doing weed. Um, I started drinking. So when I gave my life to Christ, and then um, I, I also used to have uh, dreadlocks. I used to have dreadlocks. They were somewhere up to here, and um, both my ears are pierced. So I was part of a gang at that uh, at that age. Very violent. I used to be very violent, and I used to have a very uh, a hot temper. So I remember the day that I gave my life to Christ, I was high on weed and I was very drunk. So there was a, a crusade just behind our house, and this thing was just making too much noise for me. So I decided to, I decided to go out uh, to go and tell them to uh, switch off their PA system because it was making noise for me. So when I got there, I got to the tent, uh, the tent entrance. Then right by the tent entrance, um, some ushers tried to uh, 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 interrupt me because they didn't want me to get inside because they were saying uh, because I was making a lot of noise. Then the pastor said, "No." allow him let bring, bring the young man inside so they took me in when i got inside uh, the pastor prayed for I, I i don't know what happened the pastor prayed for me then about 20 or so minutes later uh, i passed out uh, I, I actually i passed out then 20 to 30 minutes later i i woke up you know so when i woke up i, I I'm, I'm now asking myself where i am there's people they're singing the pastor is saying uh, stand up my son uh, come here, God loves you, you know, so so I, that was when I gave my life to Christ, and then I started uh, 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 loving the things of God from that age, I started attending uh, 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 youth uh, meetings, I started hanging out with uh, uh, some other born-again uh, children of God, so my journey started from there, and I became hardcore, a, a, a hardcore young a, a Christian guy from that age, so what I used to do I never used to know the Bible, but anyway, I would go. I started preaching in uh, in schools. And what I used to do, I used to go to schools without knowing the scriptures, without knowing the Bible. And when I would get to the schools, I would start preaching to them about my uh, my life, you know, to say, this is where God me, uh, this is where God took me from. I used to do this. I used to do this. I dropped out from school. Things were tough. I did this and this. I was involved in such things like this. So people used to get born again just by listening to me uh, preaching the word. Then I met a certain man of God in Zimbabwe who took me under his wing, started mentoring me, teaching me the scriptures. I have never been to a Bible school in my life. I've never attended any uh, Bible institute. So I just met a man of God, he took me under his wing started teaching me the scriptures, teaching me the Bible, teaching me this is the gospel, this is holiness, this is purity. Everywhere I used to go, I used to uh, carry the, you see the small Gideon's Bible? Yes, the yeah, blue one. The, 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 the blue small Gideon, uh, Gideon's Bible, uh, it was given to me by this other white man uh, 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 who I met in town, and then he just uh, gave me the, the, the Gideon Bible. So I used to carry that Bible with me everywhere I would go, you know. So I would open that Bible, I would go through a, a, a Corinthians, a, 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 a Corinthians, First Corinthians. I'll go to uh, through Second Corinthians, First Timothy, Second Timothy, and those were my major scriptures because they used to uh, rebuke and condemn a lot. They used to rebuke. They used to rebuke sin. A, 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 like for example, um, First Timothy, where the Bible talks about women dressing in an apparel manner. Uh, dressing with so much modesty and everything those are those were my scriptures that was the kind of gospel that i used to preach many people even in church never used to like me because i would call a spade a spade i'll tell them guys you cannot be doing this it's wrong you cannot be doing this it's wrong you cannot be doing this you know so that's my journey um that i took you know uh, uh in christianity so I can say from a young age, even before I, go, I, I gave my life to Christ, I knew that there was something special about me. I used to have uh, dreams. I used to have dreams, and I'll, I'll go to school, and I'll tell my teachers these dreams. Then they'll confirm and say, no, what you're saying is true. That is actually what I'm going through. So, it's, it's, But for me to get to discover that really I think uh, there's a calling upon my life, I, I discovered it after the age of 18 when I gave my life to Christ. Now you moved to East London, planted a yeah. church, Spirit Life uh, yeah. Church, and a lot of things happened in East London. 
it seems like it was some of the genesis of your uh, derailing from from truth. Uh, was it just your derailing from truth? Was that something that just happened from yourself, or it was your interaction with other men of God, prophets, pastors that now came in? Uh, I, I'll say that um, you you probably know me from the from the East London world, but um, when I was eighteen years old, okay, my my my, my journey started at thirteen. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, uh, I, I was in Harare. I moved from Blawayo, I moved to Harare. Then I was in Harare. Um, then that's when I started a church in Zimbabwe when I was 18 years old. Uh, there's, I think there's some articles uh, right on the internet. Um, I, I'll look them up and I'll send them to you. I was 18. Then I started a church in Zimbabwe. It was called Palace of Glory. That was when I began my ministry journey. At that time, I was staying with a family from Zimbabwe. They took me under them. When we started the church, we started the church in their backyard. We bought a tent. Uh, we bought a tent. We bought PA system. And they say to me, Jay, you are gifted. Do not collect offering. Do not collect money. Don't take anything from anybody. This was a very wealthy family. They loved me to bits. They said to me, don't collect anything. Whatever you need, we are going to supply it for you. If you need uh, 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 clothes, we'll buy them for you. If you need a car, they bought a car. They bought everything. Everything that I needed, they bought it. Pastors from Zimbabwe actually know what I'm talking about. Because at that age, even in Zimbabwe, so many pastors, they actually, they were praying to be like me because they were wondering, how, how, how is this guy so young like this? And you look so successful. It's like it's successful, you know, everything is, is, is happening and stuff. So um, at 18, I started that church, 19, 20, then around 21, I can't remember uh, at the exact age, but um, around 21, that was around uh, 2015. 2015, that was when I moved to East London, just to fast track everything. Uh, there, there, there are a lot of details that I'm not adding, but just to go straight yeah. to, your, uh, to your question. Yeah. One thing I want to know is where did it go? Where did it begin to go wrong for you? Where did you okay. get initiated into an occult? Did you get into a covenant? Uh, mm. that looking at your genesis, how you got saved and everything, there was a lot of truth. You were living in yes. truth, living in yes. righteousness. Yeah. You know, you yeah. really are serving God. But where did it go wrong? Was it somebody say telling you, hey, look, uh, you can actually uh be successful this way or was it the 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 the, the pride of life or the, the you know the loss from money you know where, where did it go wrong for you i want to be able to do that so we can connect it to the east london and i there's quite a lot that i want to talk about east london okay okay so um what happened was that um there was there was a certain guy that i met um this guy is from ghana uh, when i met this guy he said to me you know what uh, you you have a gift you've got a, a good church you know everything is going on so well but there's a place where i can take you where you can begin to um you know uh, prophesy deeper and you can go deeper in the prophetic you can have power you know for your church to grow so he spoke to me in a way that i was i was like wow this is this is amazing you know this is good at that time i didn't have a spiritual father i did not want anything to do with uh, spiritual fatherhood. I never used to believe in spiritual fatherhood. That was just me, you know, that was mm -hmm. just me. Uh, so when I met this guy, then that was the trip that we took, a trip that I spoke about in one of my uh, live broadcasts. I so took, took a trip with this guy. Accra, yeah, Kumasi. <clears throat> yeah we, 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 took a, we took a flight from uh, Harare. Uh, we, we landed in Kenya, we slept over in Kenya. Then the following morning, it was Accra, then from Accra, it was um, Accra, then Kumasi, then Kumasi, Togo. Then from Togo, we entered uh, Benin. Then when we got into Benin, that was when we went to the uh, place where, uh, I can't remember the name of the place, and I, I can't even remember how we got there. It took us uh, some few hours, really, to get to the place, and it was a, no. it was a, a village deep down in the villages. Yeah. Now, in case you're watching and you don't know Benin, Benin is between Togo and Nigeria geographically. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. Benin is like the center of voodoo. True. True. So, you know, they Very have an true. annual festival where people come from all over the world. 
for yeah. voodoo for, for yeah. witchcraft is mm -hmm. all around benin is that way so you remembered going into that village what did yes. you guys do? what sort of process was that was it for you so when we when we went to this village uh it was in benin in a place called uh Kotonu. Um, I'm, I'm i'm sure you know Kotonu because it's I know, just, uh, next, next to nigeria yeah so we went to this village when we got there there was an old man uh who was there uh, so I'm 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 still with this guy who was taking me there, and um, when we got to the place, uh, the guy was already in. Well, he was already part of the uh, uh, um, um, part of the cult, part of everything that was happening. So he was actually just taking me there. So they told me for they so they gave me uh, options. They said if you want um, to do money rituals, we can do money ritual for you. If you want to do um, a power or if, if if you want to revenge somebody hurt you badly and you want to kill them uh, but you don't want to hire people to go and assassinate them we can actually send everything from here you just give us your picture you pay an amount of money then we are going to uh, take the uh, person spiritually uh, they gave me quite a lot of uh you know options then when it came to church they told me we can give you an option for crowd uh, so that your church can have uh, lots of crowd we can give you uh, spiritual power. We can give you um, a spiritual eye for you to be able to prophesy uh, deeper and things like that. We can give you... Uh, th there was a lot of uh, things that they spoke about. Then they said, um, since it's my first time, and uh, they have to also evaluate and see the kind of blood that I have. Because there's, there's a certain kind of blood that, uh, for example, uh, if you go there, and your bloodline is actually weak, uh, whatever that they'll do to you, whatever they can do for you, it can actually make you to lose your mind. You can go mad because whatever that they'll uh, give you will be heavy on you. So they said, we have to evaluate and see um, and check uh, your bloodline and everything and see how, uh, uh, um, how, uh, how strong you are. Then... That was the first day. Then they said, for now, what we have to do, we are going to do uh, something for protection. Protection, they, they came with a, with a razor blade. Then they cut uh, my body. They cut somewhere here on the chest. They cut on my back. They cut on the sides. They cut on different places on my body. Then there was a blackish um, powder that was mixed with some other things that I don't know. Then they rubbed everything onto my body. They rubbed everything onto my body. They rubbed everything. Where they cut, they rubbed that thing. Where they cut, they rubbed that thing. Then they said, that is for protection. This was done in a certain room where there were some idols inside and different stuff. Uh, then the following day, they, 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 they washed me. They washed me with, uh, there was water that they put in a, in a bucket. Then they put some leaves, different leaves, different stuff inside. Then they gave me the water and then I washed myself uh, with that water. Then they told me that the first part um, is done. Now we have to uh, initiate you uh, and introduce you to the God that you are going to be serving and introduce you to the God that you'll be serving um, and uh, uh, tell you how you're going to do it. I actually spoke about everything on the live broadcast, but for the for the sake of those... Who, yeah, who you can just uh, make it concise, just uh, briefly. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so... Yeah, so after everything was done, they took me into this room then I knelt down before this other big idol that was there. Uh, there were funny stuff uh, flowing on it the, the, that looks like blood and other things. Then they introduced me to uh, <clears throat> they introduced me to this God. Then they said, "Say your name." After you say your name, they gave me some words to speak. I spoke those words. Then after I spoke those words, they told me, uh, "Now you have to uh, get into a covenant with uh, with this God. This is going to be your God from today." Then afterwards, we are going to give you something, an idol that you'll carry with uh, back to your country that you're going to be using uh, anytime you want to do anything. You'll be worshipping that God. You'll be kneeling down before that God. You'll be going on your knees before that God. And then, so that was the process. That was the process. Okay. And then okay. uh, the name of the God was called Atovi, A-T-O-V-I. That was the name of the God. So they gave me the words and everything that the words that I was supposed to use to connect with this God. Then they gave me a horn, a very big horn like that. When they gave me that horn, I took the horn. Uh, I took the horn with me. So I was worried because this was a very big thing. 
Then they said, no, don't worry. There, no, one, no one is going to set your bags. No one is going to ask you about it. So I was afraid, but uh, I, I, I took it with me to Zimbabwe successfully. The rituals that I was supposed to do on it, I was supposed to um, uh, kill a, a fowl, either a fowl or a chicken, every day, <clears throat> every day, or at least three times to four, uh, to, to, to four times a week. I, I'll kill this chicken, sprinkle the blood on the head of this, um, sprinkle the blood on the head of this, uh, on this god. And then uh, I'll use gin, you know, uh, gin, alcohol. Then I'll, I, I was supposed to drink this gin, uh, shake it in my mouth, spit it on that god, and then mm. uh, lick it a bit, and then uh, spit in the air, speak uh, the words that they gave me, invoke the spirit on it. Then the spirit will possess me. Then I'll now go and do whatever that I have to do. So that was just the, the, the initiation process and everything. Then uh, the whole journey, I went back to Zimbabwe, I was doing ministry, everything was then. Afterwards, I had to move to East London, coming back to your East London question. Yes. Yeah. Yes. There's something very fascinating. You you, you were doing okay as a young person, yeah. because True. a lot of the comments that I saw actually saw for a lot of people, like, hey, True. you are that age and you're doing so, so great. You know, God True. has gifted True. you um, and you've got support, financial support from this family you spoke about, True. you know. Um, for you inside of your heart, was it the quest to make more money? Was it the quest to, like the Ghanaian friend said, you know, you can grow your church to a mega-sized church and be one of the one of these pastors in town? For you inside your heart, what were you looking mm -hmm. for? Uh, was it money? Was it fame? What was what was that one thing? Uh, I, I think for me, it was not money that I was looking for because I had the money at the time. As young as I was, Pastors from Zimbabwe. I used to help a lot of pastors in Zimbabwe. I would buy them groceries. They, they most of the Zimbabwean pastors, uh, my age in my age group, they know me. They used they, they would come to me, would hang out together, would go for conferences and stuff like that. So for me, it was not money that I was looking for. I was looking for the next level of power. I was looking at all these guys performing. So you want to see, you want to see miracles. You want to see the blind. Yes. You know, I, they can I want the name come mega walk. church. Yeah, I wanted a mega church. Huge crowd. Know, crowd. I wanted to see crowds. I wanted to to see uh, 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 miracles happening, the blind seeing, uh, uh, the crippled walking. That, that's what I wanted to see. And this guy told me uh, clearly, and they said, listen, my brother, all these guys you see doing this, this is what they do. They are all a, a part of the cult. All of them. They are all part of the cult. All these people you see uh, doing, uh, uh, going for crowds, even when I got to that place in, in, in Benin, they actually told me, because the man was speaking uh, pidgin, so he's, I, I couldn't yeah. understand the pidgin at the time. So my friend I, that I went with would interpret. Then they told me that there's a lot of pastors, not only a, a few pastors, but there is a lot of pastors, a lot of Zimbabwean pastors, a lot of South African pastors, a lot of... Um, a African, Zambian, Malawian pastor who have actually traveled to that place and who are using their spiritual power to uh, have crowd and to do miracles and stuff. So I was intrigued and I said, ah, so if this is the route, then that means I'm on the, I'm on the right track. Then I'm going to follow this route. That means God cannot do miracles. That means God, can, and I was convinced that if all these pastors are using uh, a witchcraft for miracles, then who am I not to uh, uh, follow the same trend? Yeah. All right. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, we're going to dive straight into East London. There's okay. quite a bit of stuff that I want to show you there uh, because okay. my encounter, my uh, getting to know about you was East London okay. and some evidences that I want to present, you know, just so we can look at it. We're just going to take a short break now. Okay, sure. Lord, you are our refuge and strength. E ajuda nos a não temer. As the earth is shaken. Tu no mirira ime. Tu estás con nosotros, Señor, todo poderoso. You are calling us to be still. Be still, not afraid. Nem passividade. That you will be exalted among the earth. Be still. Be creative. A être généreux. A ser amables. Believe and trust. That you are God. Estar quietos. Be mindful. Hacer tu pueblo 
tu amado. Lord, we bring our hopes to you. Our families, our finances, nossa saúde, e nossa quietude, em nossos hogares, em nossos negócios, em nossos hospitais. Tu saidia kuona unayo tenda. We pray for wars to cease. Oramos para que cesen las guerras, para que las armas se destruyan. Did and peace declared as we face this together. We pray for the people trapped in their homes. With those who do them harm. To help to be released and restored. We pray for communities unable to isolate. Obligés de cohabiter, craignant d'être infectés. Ayúdalas a estar seguras y sanas. Acompaña a las personas en medio de su ansiedad y aflicción. Help us to be still. As you are exalted among the nations, exalted in all the earth. Até mesmo nesse momento. Be with us. Be our fortress, Almighty God. Amen. Welcome back from uh, that short break. Thank you so much for joining us. A lot of people are joining us here for the very first time. We thank you. Uh, tonight I'm speaking to Pastor Jay Israel, based in Durban, uh, formerly from East London, and we've been giving us a background uh, about himself. And it's very important for us to establish that, just so we know uh, where where he's coming from. Actually, yesterday we were supposed to do the same thing on your platform, uh, just to be able to get people to understand uh, where he's coming from. For some of you guys, yeah. you've had some of these stories before now. It's fine. There's quite a lot of people here who haven't had, you know, the opportunity to to listen to his story. Um, and some of them, you know, maybe they don't even know him. Maybe they've heard about him, but never really got the time to really sit down and listen. So we need to be able to establish that background. And that is very, very important for us to do. Now we go to East London. When you got to East London, you know, I mean, I don't even want to go into how you got into East London, how we started and all that. But uh, just the fact that your church in East London, Spirit Life Church, yeah, um, a lot of things happened there that was that I got cut into. You know, I got okay. called into a, a lot of issues. Uh, where, what, and what did you would you say went wrong in East London? You know that I mean, the other day you were speaking to to a lady uh, on your on your Facebook yeah, page, Lisa, yeah. who was part of your your East London uh, part of your life in East London. Okay. Let's look at what went wrong in East London. You had a church, uh, you know, fairly great church. There's like thousands of people coming. Uh, sure. You know, you you were right there. Uh, a lot of stuff is happening. But at the same time, for me myself, the news that I've been receiving, the evidences that I've gathered, was showing that look, it's not what you think it is from the outside. So break it down for us. What happened in East London? What went wrong? What did you do wrong? Um, I'll say that um, my 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 arrival in East London was from my from my side uh my arrival in east london was was fairly good in as much as i was still uh operating under this um you know i had still i, I had not yet uh, completely disconnected myself from this um you know from this initiation this spirit uh this spiritual initiation that happened in uh in, in benin so when i got to east london uh, i was saying to myself okay i think I, I shared I shared on one of my live broadcasts that I actually threw away the the God in um, threw away the 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 idol that that I was given in 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 in, uh, in Benin. I threw it away before I moved to uh, to East London. 
So when I moved to East London, um, when I moved to East London, uh, I, I, I think I wanted to do, I've always wanted to do things the right way. I've always, I've always had it in me to want to do things, um, you know, to do ministry the right way, to do everything the right way. So my arrival in East London, I remember 20, ending of 2015, I got a call. Uh, in fact, I got a, 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 a message on Messenger from, um, from the brother of um, a certain prophet who is based in, uh, in the UK, in London right now. So he sent me a message on Messenger and he said to me, hey, my brother, I see you are in East London and you seem to be, um, you seem to be doing so well in East London, you know, because when I got to East London, I got there uh, in, in a short space of two months, I had already gathered crowds. We had already close to, you know, three to 400 people were already uh, coming to fellowship with us, coming to the church uh, 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 and everything. So this guy sent me a, a message and he said, I, I see that, um, you know, I see that uh, you are doing well in East London. Who is your spiritual father? Then I said, ah, I've, I've, I've been following uh, this prophet. I, I, I wouldn't want to mention his name on this broadcast, but uh, he's, from, he's from the UK. He's from the UK in London. You probably know who I'm talking about, Solomon. So, um, yeah. Yeah, so then he said, ah, you know what? Uh, actually, uh, Papa will be, coming to, will be coming to South Africa. So how about you come over and meet him so that you guys can, you know, can talk and stuff like that. So I said, no, I've been following this man. I've always wanted to be, you know, his son. Even in Zimbabwe, I used to attend some of his services. I used to go there and stuff like that. I used to. So then he said, okay, that's, come that's, and meet him in Tobe. That's the one, who is, the one who is an angel. Yes, yes. The one who is, a, who is an angel, yeah. <laughs> Someone you, you are savage. <laughs> so yeah, so um, so they invited me. I went to Joburg. When I went to Joburg, I met up with him. Uh, I remember first time when I met up with him, uh, it was not really that that pleasant. Uh, they asked me, "Where's your seed?" You know, "Where's your seed?" Then I said, "Ah, no." Then I took out some money. I tried to give him the money. Then he said, "Ah, no." He just touched the money, and then he said, "Ah, I think he felt like it was too small, so he took it and he gave it back to me." That was the first encounter. Then I kept on going back again and again. We would meet there, you know, with some of the guys, even the Pretoria guy, uh, the prophet from Pretoria. We used to meet there, uh, you know, and we would meet in Joburg. He would come. One time we met, it was, uh, you know, that man of God from, from UK. It was his birthday. Then uh, the prophet from Pretoria came with a bag that was full of money. You know, it was just a challenging thing to say, hey, this guy has come to honor our father. His bag is full of money. You know, like a whole suitcase, you know, it was full of money. Then he was coming to honor uh, uh, our father with that money. And some of us had just brought some chicken tent. You know, it, it felt like, hey, you know what? I, 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 what should we do, you know, to be like this man? That, that was everybody. All, all the sons that you see following uh, this man, all you see, all the sons you see following him, all of them, their dream is to be like Pretoria, you know? All of them, their dream is to be like Pretoria. Even the 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 the, the UK pastor as well. Uh, you know, everywhere he goes, we invited him in East London. He didn't preach about anything. He was just preaching about uh, the Pretoria guys. So, so that was my first involvement uh, with uh, with uh, the prophet from UK. And when I met him again and again, then I sat down with him. I told him that hey, this is what I got involved in. I went to this place. I did this and that. And then when I did these things. Uh, I want to come out of this thing, but I don't know how I'm, I'm going to come out. You know, I, I, I'm tired of this thing. I want to serve God the right way. I want to do the right thing. I want to come out. I'm tired, you know. So um, then he said to me, ah, no, 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 don't worry. In our family, we don't do those things. Don't worry, don't worry. No, we'll know what to do. Then that was it. The next thing, uh, I know that he sat down with the other guys uh, and he, he started talking about me to them and it didn't sit well with me. But I kept on going, you know, I kept on going with, to him because of, uh, you know, it was just the trend that, oh, no, he's our father. You know, he's our father, he's our father, he's our what, what, what. So uh, then, you know, I got so, so, so much. My arrival in East London, in as much as I was operating uh, with this uh, thing that I had, I was not after money. God is my witness. Even those who were moving with me will, 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 will clearly tell everybody here that 
I was not after money. I had so much love for people. I had so much. I wanted to do things the right way. And I actually told myself that now that I've come to South Africa, uh, I think this God is giving me a, a second chance to do things the right way, to do ministry in a proper way, because I have a calling and I believe that I'm really called by God. So when I went to this man of God, I wanted help. I did not want anything to prophesy. I did not want impartation. I just wanted spiritual help. And I could not get the help, you know. I couldn't get the help. The help never came. I kept on trying again. Even his brother, the the the, the UK prophet, his his own young brother, his own elder. I think he's his elder brother. He's also a, an angel as well. So he knows the story that I'm talking. He knows everything I'm talking about. So it, it's there's there's no element of lie in everything that I'm saying because there's witnesses to everything that I'm saying. So. I needed help. I even shared with him and I said, hey, my brother, this is the problem I have. I really need help. I'm tired of this thing. Was, so it was, was that while, me, you were in, while you were in East London? Or while before? I was in East London, yeah. Okay, let's, let's break it down. Just blow by blow. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, I want you to take responsibility for what you felt you did wrong in East London. Just blow okay. by blow. Solomon, this, is, this happened and obviously this was not okay. This happened mm -hmm. and this was not okay. Some of the stuff that you've never said before. Like I said, right here, we talk about really stuff that would, would help us. Stuff yeah, that would, yeah. would be able to, to, to help us quite a lot. There's a scripture here that I put, James 5, 16. Okay. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another so that you may be healed. The effective okay. and prayer of the righteous man can accomplish much. Most times we look at the second part of that verse. The effective fervent prayer of a righteous man can accomplish much without looking at the first part where he says, therefore, confess your sins to one another. Mm -hmm. He didn't say confess your sins to God. You know, he says confess your sins to one another and pray for each other so that you may be healed. If you confess okay. your sins to me, it's putting a responsibility on me to pray for you and so you could be healed, you know. So I want you okay. to take responsibility. Obviously, I know you okay. and I know that there's a lot of stuff that you did in East London that was not legit uh you know so let, let me let me start by saying that um when when the bible say confess your sins uh to one another and pray for one another as that you may uh you may be healed you know i believe um personally i'll, I'll be very honest with you uh, to me i believe this is not a, a platform for me to confess you know uh, because if if i would want to confess i would say so you know what? The Bible says, confess your sins to one another. I'll give you a private call and then I'll talk to you so that you can help me to pray. But the 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 I'm going to speak about stuff. I'm not I'm not trying to run away from anything. Yes. But what I want to say and what I just want to put out there is that everything that I'm going to speak about here, you know, these are things that I have um I have spoken about on my on my I've already confessed these things to the people who I believe are following me. A, a, are following my ministry and they've uh, dedicated themselves to say they really want to pray with me and stuff like that. So whatever I'm going to say now, I believe it is just to educate a young pastor who's watching, educate yeah. somebody who's out there to say, guys, I really did these things because of one, two, three, four. So please don't fall into the same trap. I don't know if, if, if it's clear. Enough. Yeah, I, I got it. And you are sure there is, there is nothing that you've left out? When I say confess your sins to one another, I mean, mm -hmm. you never did me wrong. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Maybe you did me wrong because there was a fake account that was created and there was stuff that was said about me. You know, okay. I knew it came from you and you and I know that, you know, but that that's just by the way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I know you, you're trying to reach out individually to some of the people that you've done wrong and which is the right thing mm -hmm. to do. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and what I'm talking about here is just corporately and say, look, just so again, like you said, okay. for, for us to be educated, for yes, us to yes. understand, this yeah. is not a code of law. We are sure, not trying sure. to, <laughs> we're not trying to sentence you. We don't have the right <laughs> to do that. We are trying to understand because we are one body. So yes, yes. you can go blow by blow and say, Solomon, this is how I operated. This is what mm -hmm. I did from your private life to a church life to the way ministry was run mm, mm. um so I, I i would like to say um as well you know when we are still on that um on that uh, on that same note um 
I, I don't I don't want to feel like I'm in an interrogation room, you know. <laughs> We're having a conversation. Yeah, yeah I, I wonder. I, I would I would really appreciate if we can if we can have a conversation that is going to you know to enlighten uh, the saints and also because me coming out like this, Solomon, I'll be honest with you, uh, I've lost a lot. I have lost a lot in the process, and I'll tell you why and when I decided uh, to really come out and when I got tired and how I got tired. I'll, I'll speak about everything, but yeah, we'll speak about I that later. Lost a lot. I've lost a lot. I've lost relationships. I've lost uh, money. I've lost people. Of course. I'm a loner. Right yes. now, as we speak, yeah. I'm a loner. Where I'm sitting right now, this is where I spend my whole day. In this room where I am, this is where I spend my day. I, I don't have friends. I don't have friends. I don't have friends I reach out to, you know, so um, just to clear that. So in East London, um, in East London, uh, I, I, I don't know where to start, you know. No, just blow I, I, blow. you don't have to say everything. You just yeah, have to say yeah. area of, of miracles. This is what we did that we shouldn't have done. In the area okay. of finances, this is what we did. In the area of women, this is what we did. Okay. You know. Oh. All right. So um, I think on the on the on the area of uh, of finances, you know, when, when like uh, on the on the financial side, our East London ministry during the time during my time of being with uh, of being with uh, Uber Angel, you know. Sorry, Ash, sorry, I, I just, uh, his name just, uh, you know. Okay. Yeah, so during my time of, of being with him, uh, money m m money used to come, but it was not really like that because I remember at that time, I, I didn't know most of these things, you know, like money collection. We, we used to struggle together with uh, with my East London people during the era of uh, me being with the with the UK guy. We used to struggle together to pay bills. We used to struggle together to pay rent. We used to struggle uh, struggle together to pay for stuff. Uh, and that time, I was I was very close with my people. You know, very close. We, we were we were operating as family. I might have hurt some of them because of the growth of the church. The more it grew. Uh, the more I wouldn't, uh, I was not able to give some other people attention and stuff, and then some got hurt and stuff like that. But at that time, I can say I was really trying by all means to do legitimate things. In as much as the spirit that I was, I was, I was having that I really needed help about was not a a a, a, a right spirit, you know. Mm. Then mm. everything of miracles, uh, East London people are my witness. I started going deep into the miracles of uh, wheelchairs, healing people, bringing stuff. And I believe that, that that was when you began to hear about me, you know? Yeah. So I, I began to do these things when I met with the Jobek pastor. I didn't know some of these things. It was the Jobek pastor. I'm not trying to blame him. I'm not trying to run away from things. But for everything that you know, you must always... Um, you must all you know for for everything that a person knows there will always be a person who introduces you to stuff you know so it was the, the it was the the santin pastor you know who say to me listen son you know you can do parables you can actually pay people for stuff like this you know you can uh you know people can get paid you know if you want to perform miracles you know you can boost people's faith by putting people on wheelchairs people can come and do things and and even when i went to the santin pastor i was also looking for help but the help never came because I really adored this man. I wanted to be with him. So maybe I'm, I'm, I'm not giving you exactly what you want. Drop it to me. Let me respond. Ask me. Let me respond. It will be easier that way. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's all good. You know, I, I, the way that you want to put it, you know, yeah. it's, um, it's, it's indeed, you know, totally up to you. Uh, cool. Because one of the things that I want to do here and I want people to understand is, uh, like I said in the beginning, I'm a journalist and I'm a Christian. And yeah, yeah. At the same time, I need to ask questions. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and it's not for me to... There's a, there's over a thousand people watching now. And it's yeah, not yeah. for me to... And it's just for them to take what they can take from my questions sure, and, from, sure, and sure. from our conversations for them to make uh, whatever they want to make out of it. Yeah, but, because yeah. at, but at the end of the day, we're talking about repentance and we're also mm -hmm. talking about mm -hmm. um we, we're talking about repentance and we're also talking about 
uh, conf confession. And, true, and true. obviously, there, there are a lot of people who who felt, who, who are feeling like, ah, no, should we give him a chance? Shouldn't we give him a chance? That's not, that's not really, you know, our, our place, that kind of thing. Uh, but maybe, can I just say something on that, on that regard? Yes, please. Yeah, you know, um, Solomon, I, I, there's something that I want you to know and everyone who's watching. Yeah. What I am doing, I'm not looking for men's approval for what I'm mm -hmm. doing. That's mm -hmm. number one. Number two, I have risked a lot for me to be doing what I'm doing. Money was sweet. I won't lie to you. One-on-one -on -one money was sweet. For me to be collecting money of one, it was very nice. Prophetic seed was very sweet. Collecting tithe. I'm speaking about tithe. I'm, I'm literally clashing the demon of mammon. I'm literally dealing with mammon left, right, and center because I don't want anything to do with it. I got tired. So there is no way I can run away from a place where there's abundance. I, I would go if, if, I, if, if I wanted to, to go on holiday. I, it was a matter yeah. of just waking up tomorrow morning and I'm on holiday because the bank account is, is, is full, you know. So I cannot run away from that place of having abundance of money. Everything is available. I've got cars. Any car I want to drive is available. You know, things like if I want any girl that I wanted to have, you know, I would help, I, 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 would, I would have them anytime. So I cannot run away from a system like that to come to a place where I'm sacrificing money for the sake of pleasing people I've never met, people I don't know, people who are just on social media, who are probably uh, on social media with five rand data, and I don't know whether they'll pay my bills or they'll not. <laughs> I don't know if you understand. No, 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 it's fine. It's fine. Yes, yes. No, I, I totally understand you. Uh, mm. That's why at the beginning, you know, it's yeah. about God. The moment you begin to hear what people are saying, what people are not saying, your walk sure. is with your walk with God. Whatever yes. you disclose yes. here or not disclose here is between you and God. I'm before sure. you with a clean heart. Whoever yes. is I know. I know. While commenting or watching and doesn't have a clean heart and sure. wants to begin to put certain and impose certain things on you, yeah. that's the that's their that's their to sort out, you know. Mm. But what we are trying to do here is it's actually a, a, an extension of love, saying, look, yes. hey, J. Yes. Joel has this fit. Has he come back? Let's speak to mm. him because we love him. Yeah, yeah. Because we're always going to love him. No mm. matter what happens, we're always going to love him. Yes, we can, we, can, we can talk about things and bring out our dirty laundry and talk about it. Mm. And mm. some people think, ah, he's going to tarnish our reputation and all that. If your reputation is in Christ... <laughs> yeah. It's not at, your at reputation. This moment, I, I, I don't have a reputation, by the way. If your reputation is it's in Christ. Christ. My have, reputation so, is in Christ. Let I've him, got nothing let to him worry about. Out. Nothing to hide. Yeah. So, yeah. Let him sort that out. Right. Mm. But as we proceed, let, let's let's quickly look at some of the stuff that came to me. Some of this, I have okay. quite a lot of stuff that, that I, I've gathered over, I think, over the okay. last two, three years, you know, okay. concerning you and, and all that from sources. Uh, this is, uh, we can look at this. You remember this okay. from each of the daily dispatch 20, 2017 yeah 2017 is say uh busted yeah. common preacher called healing healthy mm -hmm. actors. and these people were where where they were actors that you brought in from johannesburg or is it from uh hamas hamas Kral? uh these guys came from johannesburg i i've, I've spoken about this already on my yeah. on my life just, part, just, yeah. yeah just briefly and you uh -huh. spoke about um do you remember anything, any messages that normally goes out like this? Uh, this is a confirmation that the prophet will see you tomorrow. Please bring along with you a seat of not less than 500. Minimum of your seat should be 500 and above and shall collect at your arrival. Uh, uh, Mr. Malindi, you remember anything? Uh, that was 2017. I remember that. That was 2017, yes. 2017. So, I mean, when you talk about so that, was one -on -one. Green, that was That was one-on-one -on -one payment, yeah. One on one payments, so I understand what you're talking about moving from money and, and all that kind yes, of stuff. Yes, yes. And this uh, miracle that happened, uh, saying this lady had, uh, I think something was wrong with her tongue or her tongue was missing. Uh, you remember this? Uh, so can I, I? I do remember that. Um, I do remember that. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That lady, I, I, I can't remember where she came from, but I do remember that miracle, yeah. I think I think she also came from Johannesburg, if I'm not mistaken. 
Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And <clears throat> and and one thing a lot of people were asking is mm -hmm, mm -hmm. this thing you're holding, and a lot of people yeah, are asking yeah, questions yeah. around it. I'm not sure if you've spoken about it uh, in part of yeah, your. Yeah, I've spoken about that as well. Yeah. Uh, but briefly, a lot of people are. Uh, is that a, is that a sign? Is that a is, is that, that was, just um, in or just uh, something? Uh, re remember, I spoke about the. So okay, le le let me let me just let me just take you back a bit. Uh, when when I left uh, when I left the UK pastor, I went to meet um, the Santin pastor. Yes, I went. Yeah, when I went to him, I wanted I I I I I needed help. I needed help. Uh, I wanted him to help me with my spiritual stuff, my spiritual problems, you know, um, that I had. So when I met up with him, he said to me, you know what, preach Christ, you know, glorify Jesus, uh, glorify Christ, put him first, you know, uh, this is what is going to happen. Uh, the Lord loves you. Then 2017, that's when I began to say, it's all about Jesus, Christ, uh, Jesus the celebrity, uh, back to Christ. I started talking about the back to christ message in 2017 so at the time i strong i really really believed in the man you know the santin pastor i really really believed in him i had so much faith in him in such a way that i was telling myself that i think i've met the the realest man of god ever so what happened next <clears throat> There was an ordination that took place. I've spoken about it. That, uh, I've spoken about that. Let's not glorify him. So let's not talk about him. Yeah. Yeah. There was an ordination that took place. Things happened. There was an initiation process that happened. I believe I was initiated. I'm coming from a, 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 another place of initiate uh, initiation. I'm coming into another place of initiation again. Then after that initiation of the red gowns, then I, that uh, that was when I received uh, the stick that you are. Uh, uh, that uh, the picture that you just put up there that was a stick of power you know to say um that's a stick of power you know anywhere you go you are, there's a stick of power you know carry the stick you are a powerful young man you are what 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 so that was the, the that, that's all about the stick you know it's part of the okay. it's part of the yeah okay i want to move quickly to your re with your relationship with women okay uh, you're a young man. I mean, whilst you were in East yeah, London, yeah, yeah. you were like what, mm -hmm. 25, and and 20, uh, I got in East London when I was 23 or 22, I think. Yeah, I can't so remember pretty what, much yeah. young. Mm -hmm. You're young. You are gifted. You are mm -hmm. uh, a good-looking man. So the ladies will be around you. But do you remember this lady? Uh, I do remember that. Uh, I do remember that lady. Okay, you dated yeah, her. Yeah. Uh, Solomon, I think uh, this is not right, you know. I'll tell you why. Because uh, for the sake of the reputation of the lady of yeah. you know in the picture, I don't think this will be I don't think I'm comfortable, you know, uh carrying on with this interview if this is how it's gonna be, you know. No, no, I thought I let's, thought you were let's focus on me. Let's focus on okay. me. If there are women, rather let's let's you know just bring code names. Don't don't bring people's pictures. Because but I, um, I thought it was public. I thought it was it, public. It was Everyone not. knew about it. That's okay. that's that's my understanding. Not Re just remember how. there is 1,200 people watching, and there's probably 20 people who know about this. So I really, I, I really, really uh, wouldn't appreciate okay. uh pictures of these oh. women coming out like that. You know, okay. I've been involved with uh, I've been involved with women, you know, as you have also been involved with women uh in the past before you got married, if, if yeah. that's the case. So if this is how the interview is gonna be, then I might as well just uh, you know leave the interview because I don't want to implicate innocent people. These are innocent people, and I was not raping these people. I was not the lady that you just put up. I, I didn't rape her. I didn't force her. But we had a mutual understanding of what yes. was happening, and because of that, we are still in good books. We still talk. So I wouldn't want you to uh, bring out other people's uh, pictures like that let's, so let's right. focus on me you know okay and that's good yes. what you mentioned uh yes, yes. So from, I, I, the reason why i put it out there was mm -hmm, mm -hmm. was known publicly and also okay. the fact that you still have a good relationship with her yeah because yes. i'm not putting it to you that you had 
abused or violated her in any way. Mm -hmm. So I'm not mm -hmm. that way, just so we can clear that with everybody also. Okay. I'm not saying you were violent towards her. I'm not saying you were ab abusive towards her, you sure. know? Yeah, so let's get that out of the way. And I, I'm, I don't have any of that to present to you. I would just yeah, want it to yeah, yeah. relationship because we're talking about your your love life again as a as a young person. Yeah. You yeah, mentioned yeah, that yeah. I had I had relationship with women before I got married. Yes, I've had relationship with true, women true, very young true, age. True, uh, true. and and I became I myself became promiscuous at a very young age. Okay. But I got to a place where I knew I had to have a relationship with God, serious relationship yeah, with God. Yeah, yeah. And that was when I told God that. I don't want to do this anymore. And I went okay. into covenant with God. I remember that day that I said, God, I'm never going to have a sexual, a sex. I'm not going to have a sex. I'm never going to have sex with a woman except mm -hmm, she's mm -hmm. my wife. If I True. do have sex with a woman who is not my wife, kill me. Mm -hmm. That was what I went in with God because I knew okay. implications of sexual sin. True. So True. I had to stay for... 15 years before okay. I had sex, and that was with my wife after I got and, married. Uh, uh, just, just for interest sake, how old are you now? I'm in my 40s. You're in your 40s? Yes. So why would you bring out pictures of women that I've been involved with in my 20s? It's your past. You know, I wouldn't mind. I would, <laughs> that's what I'm telling you is, I wouldn't mind you bringing pictures of my, uh -huh. my past. Because I know I've dealt with it. Because okay. I know I, I, it's in my past. Whatever I do, I will take responsibility for it. It's fine, you know. Okay. So, uh, I had to again in my personal life. I had to stay, and because I knew my weaknesses as a man, okay. I had to okay. for ten years without kissing, and three mm -hmm. parts of the body of a woman in relationship. And I went into relationship like 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 you said. Mm -hmm, I don't mm -hmm. touch your boobs, I don't kiss you, I don't touch your boobs, I don't touch your bums. But yeah, yeah, you yeah. are a young man. So obviously you're going to have these sexual temptations, whether mm -hmm. you go after it or they come after you. Okay. How do you handle it? And what were some of the mistakes that you made? Just briefly, okay. so we can just go on. Uh, can, can I ask you for a favor as we proceed? Yes. Can, can you please kindly apologize to the lady that the, the picture that you just produced because she is she is actually a very good friend you know uh, she's a very good friend of mine no um no uh sexual relationship or feelings whatsoever related okay. to that okay so i would Not appreciate if you can apologize to I, her, take then we can I take responsibility i apologize yeah. for for putting your phone okay. yeah you know you no, know, i think yeah. my from today i want you to know that you are my big brother you know <laughs> uh, you are my big brother I, anytime i want to talk you know I, i'm gonna come to you and say hey so i have a problem you are my big brother so that's why i'm i'm, I'm very free and <laughs> you understand i know Jay. i know <laughs> that's why for me also i have to push the envelope a little bit you know yeah, what i'm saying yeah. Yeah, it, 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 again it's not, I cannot insist on certain, to get certain things from you that you're not ready to disclose or put you in a corner. True. That's not the True. point, you know? True. I want to be cordial and, yeah. and feel free to tell me, Solomon, I'm not comfortable with this, just like you just did. Perfect. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. But just a little bit about... Um, she, she, she might be in a relationship right now. And uh, then this video gets to her partner to say, ah, why are they talking about you on, on, on Facebook? And and then it will mess up your life, you know? So I wouldn't want uh, anything yeah, like that. I'm, I'm, no, I'm just right. being sincere about it, you know? Yes. Yeah. Let's go ahead I then. Don't, I don't Let's mind. I'm, I'm, an op I'm an open book, Solomon. Anything you oh. want to know, I'm, I'm, I'm open. No matter how dirty you think it might be, I'm, I'm very, very much open. I've got nothing to hide, you know? <laughs> no worry. Let's go yeah. ahead then. <clears throat> mm-hmm. So just tell me a little bit about your your love life okay. uh, from East London and and where it is today, where you are, and uh, the okay. hopes of getting married or whatever. Yeah. So um, in I think uh, 20, 2016, <clears throat> I got engaged in um, I got engaged into I, I I I got engaged to a certain lady. The pictures are available on the internet. I'm sure you're also going to bring those up as well. 
Which one is that? Uh, <laughs> no, I, I see you don't want to. I, I see you don't want to go there. So let's keep it up. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I got engaged. Um, I, I got engaged in 2016. The reason why I got engaged was because <clears throat> personally, I've always been a relationship kind of person. You know, I've always been a relationship kind of guy. I've I've always wanted to have a family. Being a, uh, 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 in a in a serious relationship, so 2016, I got into a relationship with this lady, and then after three months, I proposed in church. You know, the pictures are everywhere on the on the interview and stuff. You know, so on the the, the pictures are there on the internet. So when we, when we got engaged, things didn't work out, and uh, then we I decided to break the the engagement. Then afterwards. I tried another relationship. The, the, the first lady that I, I got engaged to was from church. Then afterwards, I tried another, another relationship outside church because yep. I say I told myself that I don't want to be involved. Um, I don't want to be involved with church women anymore. You know, okay. I don't want to be involved with church women. I don't like church girls anymore and stuff. So I had a relationship outside church. I had another relationship outside church. Didn't work out. I've been trying. I've been trying to be in relationships, you know, one relationship after the other, one relationship after the other. I got into another relationship. It was interrupted by church people because they they thought she was not the right person for me. Yeah. So I left, and yeah. So I've I've been I've been involved with with um, a with with quite a few women. I, I wouldn't okay. say a lot, as in fifty hundred. No, I've I've been involved with quite a few women, and I won't lie about that. And right now I'm single. I'm not in a relationship with anyone. I'm, I'm actually trying to uh, pray about it. Hopefully you will help me pray so that I can uh, have a, you know, a stable relationship and also get married. That Those are my plans right now in terms of uh, 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 in that regard. Yeah. I have the picture of the lady you got engaged with, uh, but I'm not going to show it. I'm not going okay, to okay. put it out there. Yes, yes. Uh, but when you look at some of the mistakes, you're a young person. Young people make cool. mistakes. Jay, cool. Um, cool. Cool. what would you say, relationship-wise, I wish I had done it differently? Um, I wish I was not selfish. I wish I was, I wish I was not selfish. I wish I was considerate. I wish uh, in my relationships I was uh, open enough to, to accept the next person as they were because no one is perfect. I wish I didn't make it to be about me, 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 me all the time. If it was not all about me, me, me all the time. And, you know, for, for, for the record, you know, for the record, um, all the relationships that I've been involved in, you know, there's not even one person who can stand up to say I cheated on them. I've never cheated on anybody in my life, you know. So, but I, I've always wanted to make it about me to say, no, you must do what I want you must we must move the way that i want so even when i was in relationships with people uh were outside church i would want to change them you know for example i was in, i was I was, uh, I was involved with a certain lady i see there's a guy who actually commented right now and said in eastern uh, in eastern in eastern london <clears throat> he is wanted there's a picture right there on the pro that that's actually a fake account that's not a real account it's a fake account yeah. Yeah, so there's a picture on that account. Well, please uh, stop using fake a... account. If you have any issue, he's trying to be open. Everybody should yeah. be open. There's so, no need to fake account. There's no need to to post. Mm. I'm just gonna block this. I'm just gonna block yeah, this right. So, now. Okay. So there's a picture there. That that lady, she's actually uh, Eurasian. Um, she's 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 both European and Asian. So she's called a Eurasian lady. So when when I was with her, she 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 didn't. She didn't know much about church. So I tried to change her so that she can be what I wanted her to be, you know. If I had accepted her the way she was and given her time to change, given her time to do uh, uh, things, you know, in her, according to her own pace, I, I believe I, 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 would, I would be in a very serious relationship right now. And those are some of the mistakes that I've learned. And, um, I'm, I'm, yeah, yeah. Did you make some mistakes in the area of sex? Definitely, definitely. Um, um, I, I've, um, I've been a very, um, a very sexual guy. In uh, there's no relationship that I got into, and I was not uh, involved with the ladies uh, sexually. You know, I've, you are just I've, like I've me. Until, you are yeah. just like me until I got to that point where I say, if I do this, then I die. 
you know yeah, that, was, yeah. that was the turning point that i it was it yeah. was the turning point yeah yeah okay. so I've, I've i've been i've been i've been sexually active i've been very much sexually active and uh yeah so to me I've, I've been sexually active apart from relationships as well there's there's other girls who were just friends you know uh, nothing nothing serious uh, because of um would meet up and you know talk and then we just have you know casual sex and and that's it you know so I've, I've made a lot of mistakes in terms of uh the sex part and stuff like that so yeah that's, that's you and that's i would it. have to work on that you know mm -hmm. i i definitely would uh want to see that area of your life you know very victorious but again thank you so much for for your transparency you know we yeah. haven't finished the interview but i want to acknowledge your transparency yeah. and so many people who are watching you know mm -hmm. uh i'm the kind of guy that you can walk up to me and, and ask me anything about me i, I yes, make yes. my own understanding of of scripture is different mm -hmm. but especially when you're a brother okay. you know especially when you are in in christ because i know whatever you ask is coming from a place of like trying to understand mm -hmm. uh mm -hmm. trying to guide trying to encourage you know yeah. all that kind of stuff now yeah. after you when you turn your life around yeah when when why did it happen you know who okay how did you get from the old trip to bene republic and the prayer mm -hmm. when did you when did you have that disconnection that deliverance that you would say um, this is what happened when was how did your damascus experience like paul happened um i'll i'll say that um there was a time you know um, I'll, I'll take you back to the to the to the east london you know because everything uh, happened everything stemmed out of uh, you know it it all came out of island i'm sorry about that i was just fixing something here so e everything um started in island i think um before i had my damascus experience you know with with uh, with christ i i feel i feel like i was i got tired i got tired of everything i got tired of of games i got tired of the gimmicks, I got tired of um, the fake miracles, I got tired of the the spirit, you know, that was in me, I got tired of it, because I it, it got to a point where, because I had not completely uh, disconnected myself from that spirit, it was still tormenting me. Everyone who has been my son from East London knows that I don't sleep at night, because if I, if I was to sleep at night, I would have nightmares throughout the whole night, so I started adjusting my life in such a way that I would I, 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 I would have to be up the whole night. Then I'll sleep probably around seven, eight in the morning. And if I sleep around seven, eight, I would not have all the, all those night uh, nightmares would not come. I, I got tired, Solomon. I, I got tired, and I fell into serious depression. There was a time those who are in East London will remember that I I brought one of my ex friends. From uh, from Jobek to come and preach in East London because I was tired. I I didn't want to preach anymore. I didn't want to preach. I didn't want to do anything about. I I I just got tired of church, you know, because I knew that this is what I'm doing, and I'm just tired of it. I get to church. The church is packed. There's thousands of people. I'm a worshiper. I love to worship. When I worship, people get touched then i preach and then i begin to do things you know start praying for people you know i, I just got tired of that of, of of that whole thing that was my my turning point from there that's how it started when i got tired of that i fell into serious depression because i was empty inside i was very empty i won't lie to you i was spiritually empty mentally empty psychologically empty emotionally empty you know in such a way that uh, some of the things that I was doing, I I didn't have feelings anymore, and some of the some of the ladies that I met and they thought they were going to be in a relationship with me and I was going to be serious with them, only to realize that oh no, you know, um, I, I I I was I was confused. I didn't know I I, I didn't know who I was. You know, I, I I strongly believe I've been trying to reach out to some of them just to give them apologies as well to say you know what. Uh, 
it was not your fault. It was my fault. You know, you, you are a good woman. I, I broke your heart because you were you 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 saw me as this man who's good you, you, as a good man and you you saw your future with me you saw your everything with me but i, I was not in that space of a way i was able to accommodate the next person because inside i was tired i had no remorse i had no i had no emotions at all some of the things i would do that's why i even uh resorted to alcohol i used to drink i would drink I would drink myself to sleep. I would drink myself to to bed. I would I would make sure that I drink. Have, because, you, ever used, have you ever used drugs? Uh, I've I've never used drugs, but I've I've used a bit of weed at some point. I've used a bit of weed at some point, but I've never used drugs. I tried to use weed, but I didn't like the way that it would stain my lips, so I I I I just uh, left that. So I resorted to alcohol because. I was empty, spiritually empty, emotionally empty, and I didn't know what to do. I fell into depression. I wanted to commit suicide. I went on the internet. I started Google. I, I started uh, researching on the internet how to commit suicide. I remember I, doc I, I, I got into this, um, I got hold of this uh, dark web uh, thing on the internet where you find these guys who can actually assist you to commit suicide. I don't know if you know about that. Yes, yes, I know. Yeah. There, are websites, so, there are websites that is, you know, suicide yeah. assistance. Yeah. yeah, suicidal assistance. So I started communicating with these guys because I wanted to commit suicide. I'll be honest with you, many people who are always asking, oh, you left East London. When I left East London, there were still a lot of people in the East London church who were attending the church. I Why did you pegged, then? I just packed my bags and I left East London. Because why, did you, why did you leave? Why did you? People would... I, didn't, I didn't want to preach anymore. I did not want to preach anymore. I had an apartment. Uh, I had an apartment in Jobek. So I took my bags, loaded my bags in the car, put my clothes in there. But I left my brother and my sister in East London because we had a house there uh, uh, in East London. So I left them there. And then I just packed everything. I went to Johannesburg together with my two bodyguards. Then we were staying in Johannesburg full time because I was, I was, I was tired. I remember I used to come to East London once after maybe. I would come uh, on Sunday, then I'll come the following Sunday, come and preach. Afterwards, I'll catch a flight and go back to and go back to Johannesburg. I was empty, very, very empty. So that emptiness continued to a point where when I left East London, I was in Johannesburg. Uh, when I was in Johannesburg, I remember well that I, I, I didn't know what to do. I tried to speak to the Santin pastor. I told him that, Ish, I've got this problem that I have. You know, I, I don't know what's going on with me. I don't know. I think I'm depressed. I'm, I'm suffering serious depression. Then he said, what's wrong? Do you need money? What is it? What do you need, you know, for you to be okay? What is it that you need? I said, I don't know. It's not a money issue, but it, I think it's, it's, it's an internal thing that it's an internal war. There's a war within me that I don't understand, you know. Mm. So that war that was going on within me, it actually led me to that place of having an encounter with Christ. Because I completely lost faith in God. I won't lie to you. I lost faith in God because when I began to trace back, going back, you know, in, in, into my journey of ministry, I realized that I started well. Then when I started well, but for me to tap into the supernatural, I had to, I had to be initiated into a cult. For me to tap into the prophetic, I had to be initiated into, in, in, into the cult. And for me to begin to do miracles, I had to meet somebody who say, the only way to do miracles is to fake miracles. The only way that you can raise somebody from a wheelchair is to fake miracles. You have to pay these people so that miracles can be faked. So if when I began to trace that journey, I realized that, um, does it mean that God is not there? Does it mean that God cannot do these things? So I completely lost my faith in God. I, I, I no longer had faith in God. I, 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 I never used to pray because I, I do not want, I would look at people praying and I'll ask myself, what are they doing? You know? So I mean, because, we're talking about somebody who is, who, who's been in ministry for a while, led yes. a fairly medium church, big church, but mm -hmm. now you found yourself here, you know? And then there is the transition now for you to, to Durban. Yeah. Why didn't you take, why didn't you take a break? Like I did. Why? I did. Why? 
you take like a two year, three year sabbatical to okay. Okay. get counseling uh, because it seems like you transited from one place to another. Okay. And remember, your life was totally sort of messed up here. And the okay. transition to, you know, from unrighteousness to righteousness is mm -hmm. it's always, you know, there's always a breach. And the breach is you need time away. You need time to be able to, you know, to mm -hmm. get things right. But, but, I, but for me, it seems like you just transited from one to another, which for mm -hmm. me, if you're not careful, this may just catch up with you later on, you know. Uh, you can just get fatigue. You can, uh, you know, you can just some of the stuff that you've bottled or not dealt with. They're gonna show up, you know. Especially when, again, when you're moving from unrighteousness to mm, righteousness. Mm, mm. Um, I think um, the 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 sabbatical leave. Personally, you know, I, I'll be honest with you. I I lost faith in God, and when I lost faith in God there was always a still small voice that used to speak from inside me to say one way or the other there was that small conviction from somewhere in my spirit somewhere in my head somewhere in my heart you know so in as much as i lost faith in god i still had that thing in me that would say no maybe you know god is real 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 so when i had an encounter i was sleeping when i was sleeping I remember a, it, it was a, a five minutes dream. It was a five minutes dream that I had. The 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 that encounter is actually on YouTube. It's called the the the, the vision of rapture. Five minute dream where I was in a soccer field. There were a lot of people coming in. A lot of people are, 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 are coming into coming into this field, and I was wondering what's happening. Is it a crusade or what? It's it, it's out there on 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 YouTube. So. It was after that encounter that I had with Christ, you know, that I, I decided to say, you know what, I think for now, this is it. The following morning, the suicidal thoughts were no more. The emptiness was gone. Why? Because I realized that I think now it's time for me to serve God with a clean heart, to serve God with purity, to serve God and to begin to preach this gospel uh, without compromising or anything. I took some time off the pulpit. It might not be the time that uh, is probably um, good enough for everyone who's watching, but I think it was close to six months that I took without preaching, without standing on the altar, you know? Without preaching, without doing anything. I know it, it might not be, a, you know, the perfect timing for everyone who's watching or for yourself, uh, which is supposed to be the, 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 the normal sabbatical um, sabbatical leave but i actually took some time off the altar then that's when i now came to Deben. my coming to Deben, i left a whole church in east london and when i started in Deben, people used to travel from uh, from east london coming to attend service in Deben. you know uh -huh. so yeah. my coming to Deben, in as much as um there are people who might remember uh the santin pastor saying no the lord has spoken to me that you must go to Joburg." It was not the Lord speaking. I told I told him about it, and then he said, "No, let's just make it an announcement." But for me to make it an announcement, uh, let's let's make it uh, an announcement before time, so that by the time you go to uh, you go to Deben, it will be like so. But at that time already, I was I was I was in a place of saying, uh, 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 "For now, ministry. I'm, 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 I just don't want to do ministry anymore." You know. So I stayed out of the pulpit. I stayed away from the Santin pastor. He tried to call me, trying to invite me. He wanted to go with me to Congo. I was not available. I took some time off. I said, I don't want to do anything. Then after some time, that's when I came to Deben. When I came to Deben, I was saying, this is going to be a new beginning for me. Um, I'm coming to start afresh. I want to serve God with, with a pure heart. I want to serve God with, with purity. I want to serve God with uh, in a way that is going to be pleasing to God and pleasing to to everyone who follows me I want to do the right thing so coming to Deben was actually for me to say I'm I'm, I'm starting afresh this is a, a fresh beginning in as much as it might not be a, a, the suitable thing or the actual thing that I was supposed to have done according to different people who are watching as everybody has got their own opinions of according to their scriptural understanding and scriptural background but you know, I'm still open to I'm still open to learning. I'm open to learning new things. I'm open to that is why I appreciate you reaching out to me 
and me being on this platform, you know, for people to understand who is Jay Israel, why why am I doing what I'm doing? So uh, that's, that's why I brought yeah. you here. You see, I, I yes. didn't, you know, I brought you here. That's why some of my questions were getting personal. Yeah, uh, yeah. Because I feel people need to know. Not, I mean, you've said some stuff on your platform, but not everybody yes. is on your platform and all that true, kind of stuff. True, you know? true, true. Uh, people need to know that, just so people will understand that. Mm, uh, mm. And, and that way they would be able to see another side of you. They will be able yes. to understand yes. you. Yes. make their yeah. judgment. Yeah. What their judgment is, that's up to them, you know. Yeah, true. Uh, but you are not, I'm not here to validate you. True. No, I'm not here to condemn you either. Yeah. That's not my role, mm -hmm. you know. But I'm just here as a brother, and I feel the over thousand or thousand people that are also watching should see you as a brother, should see mm -hmm. me as a brother, and should listen to these stories. There's something uh, about stories. Okay. Yeah, something about there's, stories. Okay. That's all Jesus did. Mm. When you ask him a question, he gives you a parable. He tells you a story. Cool. So there's, cool. something your <laughs> yes. there's something about your story. There's something about your. That's why I'm concentrate. People are saying, "I oh, concentrate on the fake miracle and all that," and all. that's why I'm saying you, I'm, I'm concentrating on your story because stories yeah. have so much power. You wanted to say something. Uh, I wanted to say, oh yeah, fake miracles. I mean, I won't lie about that. It's true. Mm. I mean, I've 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 been part of the you know uh, uh, fake miracles. Uh, all the I've, I've been part of that. I won't lie. I won't run away from that. It's actually true, you know. And I think uh, at some point, you know, I'll have to. Uh, uh commend you as well you know for for the for the great work that you've been doing in as much as people pastors think you're always fighting them but it's only now that i realize that you know what the, you, you are a good guy you know you are not fighting anybody you, you ju you're just somebody who was out there for justice you know justice for people justice for the church and justice for everyone i wanted to say it it breaks my heart solomon i won't lie to you it breaks my heart when i see there are pastors who don't know that i followed them in south africa there are pastors who don't know that I really follow them, and I, at some point, I would love to sit down with them, not to teach them anything, but to learn from them. And it breaks my heart to pieces when I go on in, or, 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 on social media, maybe Facebook or all these platforms, and I see the way that they address me. Ever since my, uh, ever since I started my journey, I see the way they address me. I see the way they attack me. I see the way they talk about me, like I'm a devil. Do, do, and I ask myself, do they know what I've had to a, 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 a sacrifice just for, for this, you know, uh, 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 for, for, for me to be where I am? And tell you what, none of them has ever, God is my witness, none of them has ever sent me an inbox to rebuke me in the inbox. I'll commend one guy, I think his name is uh, Larry. He's, he's there on Facebook. I'm sure he's probably watching now. I'll, I'll commend him. Because I posted something the other day, and then he took it, he shared it on his platform. When he shared it on his platform, he gave me an open rebuke. Afterwards, he came to my inbox, and he said to me, this is not how you do things, this is how you're supposed to do things. Then I said to him, no, my brother, let me, let me explain to you where I'm coming from. Why, why you did that, yeah. Yeah, let, let me explain to you where I'm coming from and why I did what I did. When I explained to him, he said, oh, no, I understand. Then he now said, even myself at some point, the same issue that you raised, I raised it. But I realized that this issue is going to affect a lot of other people. And then I had to, you know, stop going the route that you are going. Then I said, no, I thank you so much, my brother, for what you have done coming to me to ask me. And this is my clarity. I wish all the other pastors who want to understand my journey, who want to understand who is Jay Israel? Why, why do I look crazy to people? Why at times I speak so crazily about these things? I'm condemning everything that I've been part of. It's because I got tired. I mm. got tired and now I want to do the right thing. I might be doing the right thing in a wrong way, but there are elders out there who I expect not to bash me on Facebook, not to bash me on Instagram, but to rather reach out to me. Guess what? After I had that conversation with Larry, he went on his Facebook, he deleted the post where he spoke about me. I also like, went on my Facebook, I deleted the, uh, the post that right. I posted. Why? Because we had spoken about it. That's right. And I just want to talk to leaders who are watching yeah. this or who will watch this later. This is the position where this brother is at. Reach out to him. You have a lot that you can put in his life. There was a comment that I posted earlier from, uh, from one of the leaders I know in, in PE.
uh, okay. Africa. Africa. His name is Africa. Yeah. You know, yeah. he 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 made. He said, "Look, it's not about a perfect interview, but it's about mm -hmm. the story. You know, of that is exposing truth. That is bringing yeah. truth, also yeah. exposing darkness. You're gonna check his comments cool. later. And he's a he he's a leader. So we want to see leaders who will reach out." Like I said earlier, in September last year, I reached out to you and I inboxed yeah. you. Look, that's true. That's you true. You know, I I like what you're doing and this and that, and you commend me to pray for you. And you told me, Solomon, I I used to see you as the enemy of the church, but yes. but I tried to do that. I might, and I and we learned we need to learn to separate the person from the issue. Mm -hmm. We need to learn to separate J Israel from fake miracles. Mm -hmm. I hate. And dislike hate, hate you know fake miracles with a passion, but I cannot hate J Israel. That, these are two different things, mm -hmm. and we cannot mm -hmm. just keep doing that. We're going to talk about your restitution. Just uh, a few seconds. We're going to talk about okay. your some of the ways you've tried to restitute. Sometimes okay. resistance is not complete without restitution. True. True. You know, True. how True. do we make things right? Things that we've mm -hmm. done mm -hmm. wrong. Mm -hmm. Let's just take uh, just a few a few seconds. I wasn't sure you can sing that well. So, you know, you're I, was, I, I was a good shot for a second. <laughs> you're singing a song from my country, AZ, which means king. Equeme means you lead. You know, AZ mm -hmm. is the king in the uh, in the Igbo language. But we can praise and worship God in so many different languages. Amen. Amen. And thank you so much for joining us. Uh, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's Solomon Temple. Subscribe and uh, just so you can get to uh, watch and follow some other exclusive interviews that I do. And Solomon Temple, we just talk about issues like this and just try to be as open as possible. And yeah. uh, before we went on a break, I was, uh, Jay, I was trying to say, what are some of the ways that you've tried to restitute with some of the, some of okay. the, that you felt you've done wrong with just to be able to mm. make things right you know things that you're able to make right and things that you're mm. not able to make right uh you know there's there's nothing you can do about it anyway do you have a list mm. of like 500 people 10,000 people that you need to call and say hey look you know some of them knew you were wrong some of them didn't know you were wrong because i did that actually when i got saved really saved yes. Saved like eight times, right? So the eighth mm. time was the last time. Uh, I had to go and and go to my ex girlfriends, you know, and, <laughs> and, and and ask for forgiveness for sleeping with them. I have to go. <laughs> no, some of them didn't understand it, but that was what God told me to. How God told mm. me to. I had to go to people who have taken money from. They didn't even know I took money from them, and I had wow. to look. You know, I'm sorry. This is what I did. I, I, mm. and there was no shame for me because it's like, you know, you come under Christ and whatever shame comes, it stays on Christ and you are right, cool. under, you know, and I know you've mm. been trying to reach out. I saw some ways that you've been trying to reach out to restitute. So tell us a little bit about it. Uh, I'll start with um, cars. Uh, there are cars that I was driving, you know, that were given to me, you know, under prophetic uh, instructions to say you know you must sort this car and stuff like that um i took back um a car i took back another one these these are big cars these are not small cars you know these are very big cars 
uh, I had to I had to surrender a Q7 that I was driving in East London. You know, I had to surrender another uh, car again that I was driving. I had to sur- I, like there's there's a lot of uh, things that I've had to surrender. In as much as um, t- to some other people maybe uh, who might have uh, given me uh, financial assistance at some point. One thing about me, even during those times when I was in the prophetic and uh, you know uh, doing these things and all that. I never used to put people under duress, you know, to give me anything. I would mm. always, God is my witness and East London people are my witness. I would always, you know, appeal to people to say, please, uh, we have got this thing that we want to do. Please come out and help out. We have got this project that we want to do, you know, please come out and help out. So all the people who used to help me, you know, they used to help me out of love. That is why when it comes to the restitution part, the one-on-one money, I'm, I might not be able to, Call everyone who came to see me for one-on-one to say, here's your 500, here's your 1,000, here's your 2,000. But I believe it is uh, through platforms like this where I'll, I've, I've apologized before in my platform and I'll really apologize again on this platform today to everyone who's watching, you know, uh, uh, that, you know, had an encounter with me and I would take money from you in any way or in any different way, you know, find it in your heart to forgive me uh, uh, I might not be able to take money and give it back to you. And, you know, I might not even be able to get your phone number again to call you, but find it in your heart to forgive me. So I've had to take back. There's a card that was given to me at some point. I gave it to one of my pastors. I'm sure he is watching right now. It was a Mercedes Benz. I had to take that car from my pastor and I had to take it back to the owner. You know, there's, there's money. I had to clear my account at some point. There, there were people that I knew that uh they helped me they gave me money they were struggling i reached out to them i said come take this money take this money i cleared myself you know from from everything you know there were suits there were suits a lot of suits that i used to wear some you know uh we used to buy them with the jobek pasta some he gave to me you know some i bought them myself and stuff i, I called my son uh, I, I called uh, my pastors here in east london so here in Deben, I called them. I said, take these suits. I've, I've been giving out. If, if you notice on my live broadcast, I'm coming on my live broadcast. I'm wearing casual. I've given my suits away. I've given clothes away. I, I'm, I'm, I'm starting on a, on a clean slate. You know, it, it's, it's a gradual process, Solomon. I'm, I believe I'm still in the process of, of restituting. I'm trying to reach out to people that I've hurt emotionally, physically, psychologically, mentally, you know, for example, there's a lady from East London called uh, Tabisa that you, you, you spoke about earlier, you know. I reached out to her. I said to her, listen, I'm sorry for everything that happened. And I'm really, really sorry. Find it in your heart to forgive me. Then she said, you know what? I'll have to think about it. And then I say, you know what? Listen, I'm willing to uh, go on live broadcast on Facebook publicly and give you a public apology, you know, for everyone who was involved in everything that happened, you know, mm. to also know that I'm apologizing to you for everything that I did to you. Then she agreed. That was when we went live. So that broadcast was not me trying to, knowing myself, where I'm coming from. I, I don't think uh, with the pride that I had and the pride that I used to have, I can I can go on li- live on Facebook and give somebody an apology. Somebody who used to be so strong on me like that, you know. There was no way that I would apologize to her if if it was not a sincere apology. So I'm still reaching out to other people. It's a process that I strongly believe that uh, one day I'll be, you know, I'll be free from everything. I'll reach out to everybody and eventually, you know, I'll come out of it. Now you, you've moved from a place where you had abundance. You know, like you said, you know, there were suits, there was clothes. Yeah. You could stay in the best hotel that you want to. Uh, you could... Uh, sorry about that. Uh, no, that's fine. I think my there's a problem with my speaker. Oh, can you hear me? Uh, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, sure, sure. All right, you you can continue. Yeah. So so you had everything. You had you know you yes, can leave. True. You can go into a five star hotel. You know and pay yeah. for it. You know so okay. You can go to the best places to buy suits, you can drive the best yeah. cars, go into nice restaurants, yeah. you can afford what you want to afford. But now you've moved to a new, you know, and remember, whilst you were doing that, people were paying you money 
or you're yes. giving you money, all this profit seed or paying for consultation and mm -hmm, all that. Mm -hmm. But now you cannot do that anymore. You cannot mm -hmm. take money. I don't know if you still, do you still take consultation money one-on-one? -on -one? Never. No, okay? no, 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 no. So Never. you cannot do that anymore. So that would definitely affect your lifestyle, right? Mm -hmm. so true, true. How do you intend to be able to adapt to that? Because the fact is you have to be modest now because yeah, yeah. there's no way you can maintain that lifestyle anymore True. how, how are you going to try to be modern how are you going to try to make sure you don't get tempted into you know telling people what they want to hear because you want a seat because you want them to get you know you want to get money from them and all that kind of stuff uh let, let, let me start from this uh place um this is something that i you know uh, i lost a car you know, I lost a car, a, a car got stolen. I lost a car and then I was left without it. That was the last car that I had, only car that was left, and then I lost it. So I, I was left without a car as I'm here in Deben. I see a lot of people bashing me on internet. You know, the fact that I might be looking good like this, you know, when you're looking at me on the on the on the screen and when you look you look me up on Facebook, it doesn't mean that my bank account you know looks exactly like how i look you know on facebook those are two different uh, things you see so um i remember there was a man who traveled from jobek and the man came down to is uh, to deben and the man said to me you've been preaching a gospel that i've been a, 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 a waiting for you've been you know i've been following you i followed you when you went to this pastor, I said, mm -mm, this young man is getting lost. When you went to this pastor, I said, never, this can't happen. Up to now, I've followed you for years. This man came down to, uh, 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 to, to Deben. When he came, I didn't have a car. Then when he came down, he said to me, man of God, uh, this is what I want you to know. I've got a car that I'm going to give you. Use this car, you know, to do your 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 day to day things. You know, if you want to drive from point A to point B, then he gave me the car. I won't mention what kind of car is it, but it's it's not a small car. This this is somebody who's been following me from the time I was doing those things up to today. And so, apart from that, uh, uh, apart from that, I'm also in the process of uh, you know establishing my business as well. You see, because I believe that I don't want to be in a I don't want to be a somebody who's, who's also who's always going to be asking for money because even right now I have a studio to maintain I've got stuff to pay uh, the guys the, my, my, my media are guys to pay my sound guys I've got a lot of things I have a lot of things that are still hanging from the past that I have to deal with so I'm trying to divert and get into business at the same time as I'm doing ministry so in as much as it is not easy you know it's not easy but I'm trying the best I can do God is also raising other people who are from different places, they'll just contact me and say, "Men of God, uh, men of God, please, uh, I would like to uh, bless you. You have blessed my heart. You have touched my heart. When you sing, you touch my heart." Then they just, you know, say, "Want to give you this? Want to give you that?" So it, it, it's a process that I'm, I'm I'm still going through. I believe a time is coming. My business will be fully established, and I'll be, you know, financially sound, where I'll not even have to be receiving any money from anybody not even at any point for anything we have about 10 minutes to go uh there's something okay. that i saw here it says you still charge four thousand for mountain experience in durban i've seen this somewhere before is true. this true, that's true. Uh, yeah you still that's true four thousand for mountain that's experience true. If, yes. if you charge that why do you charge that what is that for uh that's very true we go to um we go to a place called uh, drakensberg drakensberg is here in kzn in Drakensberg, there are chalets. These chalets, I think they cost about 1,100 per night. Uh, they cost about 1,100 rand per night. So we go to the mountain, we spend Friday, Saturday, and we come back from the mountain on Sunday. The 4,000 rand that I charge, and I want people to know that this is the honest truth. That is not a money-making scheme. I'm not making any cent out of it. If you do your maths, you will realize that uh, I'm not trying to make money out of that. That is why it is 4,000. That is why it's not more than that. So we pay for the, um, we pay for the, um, what do you call it? We pay for the accommodation. 
uh, on that same 4,000 run for three nights in the Drakenberg, there is breakfast uh, for two days, there is lunch for two days, and there is dinner for two days. There's transport as well that we provide. So anybody who's, who goes with us to the mountain, we hire quantums that we hire, and it is inclusive of, of that 4,000 rand. So okay. if you do the whole breakdown, you, 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 you know these uh, 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 holiday resorts where there's mountains, people go there for hiking and stuff. So if you do the maths, you realize that almost all the 4,000 rand, probably the change that we might get from there is probably two or 300 rand that will also go into other stuff as well that has to do with the mountaintop experience. Otherwise, that's not a money-making scheme. Anyone who's watching can call Drakensberg, uh, Didima, the place is called Didima if you're watching. Call Didima, ask them how much does it cost to sleep per night, how much is your breakfast, how much is your dinner, and then put the meds as well, add transport on top that you provide, then you see that it's 4,000 rand and there's nothing that I make out of that. There are allegations that you fell out with some of your spiritual fathers, sort of, because of okay. uh, you're competing for the same woman or you it was a money problem. Uh, is that true or not? I fell out with the UK pastor because of money and other things. Uh, money was the, and was women. The one. Were you the greedy one or he was the greedy one? I think he was the greedy one because uh, he came to East London and he took all the money. He left me in debt. He was asking for nude pictures from my from my girlfriend at the time. There were girls also would uh, would come to me and say, "No, he was asking for nude pictures and stuff." So, but the major reason I won't lie, the major reason why we fell out was because of money. It was because he came, money stuff happened, and then I just. I got heartbroken and then I left. Then the previous one, the Santin one, to be honest with you, before God, I never had a fallout with that man about money or about women. Wherever mm. he is, he is asking himself even up to today, what got into J. Israel? Because we never fought. We never had a fallout. We never, it is just an encounter. Even what I'm doing now, when I'm talking about these things, people think I'm trying to expose him. I'm not exposing him. I'm sharing my testimony of the things that I have done. I might bring names into the picture because we have done things together, not because I'm against him. I love him. And yeah. he knows that I really love him. We love I him. Love him. Yes. We love him. <laughs> we love him. You, you pray for him. You, 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 Solomon, pray for him, you know, yeah. but he doesn't know that. It's only now that I know because I talk to you that you actually pray for him. You love mm -hmm. him. And I also love him. So there is no ulterior motives to this. You know, it, what is happening now, God is just doing his things that even myself, I don't understand. So now, that, that's it about the fathers. Yeah. So you, you, there's a lot of young pastors like you, young mm -hmm. prophets like you. I don't even want to begin to go through their names. And some yeah. are being mentored by the wrong people. Yeah by the angels yeah you, and maybe the demons too mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm. <laughs> so the the thing is i'm afraid i'm afraid okay. for south africa as a country i'm afraid for the church in the next mm. 10 years because these young ones now they're going to be in their 30s they're going to yes. be in their 40s and they're going to do far worse than these guys are doing right now it's, it's you know? not like they, they are oh, going to do are, they are, are doing out of far worse right now Exactly. You are out of it. What would you advise a church going person? There's lots of them now watching to look mm -hmm. out for. And what would you advise a young person like you, 25, 27, yeah. 29, who is a pastor, who's been called to be a prophet, but they're still in this now? What would you tell them? They must be careful of the love of money. The love of money is the biggest problem that we have. As young, as young pastors, because we look up to these big guys that we see on TV because they're always flashing wealth. They'll flash a private jet, they'll flash all these Rolls Royce, they'll flash all the Lamborghinis, the Ferraris. And then as young people, we want to be like them. We also want to get there. And as young, as young people, no matter how anointed you are, as long as you are a young man, you will always at some point want to have certain things in your life, you know? So they must be careful because most of these people who are flashing these things, they don't know the secret behind that. You don't know where the power to make money came from. 
you don't know who was uh, robbed for all those things to come out. Some of these pastors, they flush, you know, these Lamborghinis, the Ferraris, they don't, even, they don't even belong to them. They don't even belong to them. The Ferraris, the houses don't even belong to them, you know, because at some point, even myself, there were very big cars that I would flash on social media that were not mine. But somebody who's watching from afar would say, hey, I want to be like Jay Israel. Why? Because he's flashing big cars. So be careful. It's, it, 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 it's not as, as, as green as it looks. You know, there's, 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 there's a lot of artificial grass out there. So you might think this is real grass, but it's just artificial grass. You will never know this until you have to step on that grass and feel the texture. Then you will know that the texture of this grass is fake. It is not real. Number two, women. Women will always come. The beautiful ones are not yet born. I believe the beautiful ones are still yet to be born. You know, so no matter how much you can try to say, um, oh, I want the most beautiful woman, tomorrow you'll find another beautiful woman again. So all the young men out there, be careful of money, be careful of women, be careful of falling into the traps of cults because everyone out there will come and sell you a dream and tell you for you to have a better life, for you to prophesy, for you to have money, join a cult. So be careful of those things. They must also be careful as well of, um, uh, uh, what else? of associations. For example, spiritual fatherhood. I'm yes. not against their spiritual fatherhood uh, uh, doctrine, but personally I'm saying, according to my experience, Spiritual fatherhood is a money-making scheme. That is what I have to say, according to I my agree. experience. I agree. I agree Spiritual with you. Spiritual fatherhood is a money-making scheme. There is nobody who is uh, trying to be a spiritual father to raise somebody. It's all about money. It's all about uh, building empires. That is why you get to hear other people uh, saying, uh, we are now the prophetic mafia. They are, they are, they are, they are, this is an empire. This is a kingdom that they are building, not the kingdom of God. But this is a, a cult. These are occultic tendencies. So be very careful as a young pastor. Trying to look for a spiritual father, you meet these men. They are not what they say they are, especially mm. the South African ones, especially mm. the ones that you follow the most, the ones that you love the most. Most of the things that Solomon has been posting on this account that we are live on right now, they are actually true. You might be surprised. A, 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 why I'm saying this, I'm not trying to support Solomon, but they're actually true because there are things that Solomon has posted about me that were defended by people without knowing that is actually the truth. So that's that's what I have to say. And we have this right now in South Africa, we have a situation mm -hmm. where women are being abused, rape quite a lot, uh, mm -hmm. and it has to be a very safe heaven for abuse and rape of women. And we can use sure. scripture to, to, to cover it We've seen men of God go into prison now. Uh, we've seen men of God going going to court. Uh, yeah, what would you yeah. say to, to to our church? Most churches are filled with single women. What mm -hmm. would you say to 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 a sister for her to be able to look out for to protect herself and not to be able not not to fall into the hands of a man of God? Because there's a lot of men of God that sleeps with women. They need mm. to sleep with women anyway. It's not because of pleasure, but because Ooh. of the cover that they went into, uh, you oh. know, to, to get some sort of their power. If, yeah. Advice sister, a church-going sister who is naive, ignorant, mm -hmm. and honestly seeking for God. Uh, let me put it this way, so, so that um, the, the sister who's watching now will not take this lightly. According to the uh, occultic world, you know, where I've been, thank God I've, I've, I've not done such sacrifices like that. You know, if I had done such sacrifices like that, I'll probably be having hundreds of thousands of people, a big church, a lot of money and stuff like that. So whenever you hear that uh, women are being raped, we, women are being uh, slept with in a church, a man of God has to sleep with three women before preaching. A man of God has to sleep with women in, 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 uh, in his office. A man of God has to sleep with women, uh, three, four women every week, five women every week. You must always know that there is a spiritual transfer that takes place. It is mm. part of the ritual. So you as a sister who is watching me now and you are involved with a man of God, a pastor, a prophet, an apostle, pray for discernment to know whether you are being slept with for pleasure or you are being slept with because you are loved. You are being right. slept with because you are being used as a sacrifice. 
This is what happens. Whenever this man of God will sleep with, uh, with you, after every sexual activity that happens, there are some certain uh, uh, deposits that you deposit as a woman. Your glory, your destiny, your, your, um, your, your, your star is connected to whatever that you release after sexual intercourse. So right. they will take that and use it uh, to enhance their powers uh, for wealth, for church growth, and for prophetic and for miracles. And you don't know, after uh, uh, you are involved here, everything crumbles, everything goes down, you don't know what is happening. There's something that might have happened at some point when you were involved. So when you hear the stories of bishops being taken to court because of rape, it starts from a place where you, at, at first you are asking for sex because you want to do your ritual. And then those you ask uh, for sex from because you want to do ritual, they come to an end. You finish all the girls that you can ask from. Then you start buying women. You start giving them money so that they sleep with you because now you cannot ask for sex. After that, you start, uh, so when you buy, you finish, you ask, you finish, then they get to a point now when they'll begin to force themselves on, the, on these girls because the ritual has to be done. And if, he, if they don't do these rituals, then whatever God they're serving will embarrass them. So to clear the embarrassment, they'll start raping the women. That is why you hear that a 14-year-old was raped. How can a 58-year-old man be sleeping with a 14-year-old woman, a 14-year-old child, a 15-year-old child? Those are rituals. Those are ritual uh, uh, sexual. Uh, 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 in, that's a ritual sexual intercourse. So if you are watching, it's not just about rape. It's not just about sex. But what are, are, are you sure you are prepared to lose your destiny just for the sake of sexual pleasure so that you get money? Ask yourself that question. That's right. Good questions for you, sister. And I hope you take uh, some sort of inspiration from that. Uh, this almost one, one last question also. After your, mm. you started your Back to Christ movement, why did you go back to Apostle Motla uh, Church when you all knew okay. he's all part of the gang? What's, there, what's your relationship with that guy in Cape Town, I think? And he made a video yes. about you recently. True, true. Well, um, when, I, when I went to Cape Town, I was going to Cape Town for business just before lockdown. I was not going to Cape Town to go and preach in his church. I was going to, if you watch that uh, Sunday service where I was there, he first of all explained that I spoke to Prophet Jay uh, and he told me that he was in town and then I had to ask him to come to the church. I asked him, I persuaded him to come. So I was not there for church. I was just there for business. Personally, I regret. So you're, my you're, sure you didn't, you're sure you didn't go there for the honorarium? No, no, no. No, 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 not at all, not at all. <laughs> I, I actually, I, I actually regret my visit uh, to that church because afterwards, I continued with my message, speaking against anointing oil, speaking against uh, merchandising of the gospel. Then it came out guns blazing against me, insulting me, and saying I'm a spiritual bipolar and stuff like that. So, so he never actually... to you. he never inboxed you to tell you how, about his, you know. Uh, disagreement with some of the things you said? Well, he, he, he didn't say much. He just said to me, Esh, uh, I don't know how this is going to happen, but I'm, I'm not happy with uh, the message that is going around where you are attacking uh, anointed materials. Then that was it. The next thing I saw, he was on Facebook attacking me about, you know, a, a whole lot of things, saying that I, I still have oil in my office, but all those who have been to Deben, all those who have been part of my journey since I started uh, this journey, they will know that uh, I don't sell anything. I don't. Uh, I'm. I'm just trying to. I'm just trying to do the work of God. You know, with with purity of heart. I actually regret. Uh, I actually regret my visit to that church. So we'll never see you there again. And if you see me there again, then you must disown me as your brother. <laughs> but I, I like the way that you give people chances. You give him an opportunity, you know, mm. because you disagree on certain things doesn't mean I'm not yes. going to give you an opportunity. True. You know, True. I like the True. fact that you give him an opportunity, but that didn't change your message. That mm -hmm. didn't change no. your conviction. You know, yeah. I, I like that fact because that's what Jesus did when he was hanging out with prostitutes, when he was hanging out with, with tax collectors. They disagreed on a lot of stuff, you know, yes. but there's, yes. there are areas where they disagreed on. They, yeah. they and, and by the way, just by the way, yes. is, uh, it, in as much as we disagree, me and him, we disagree in terms of our practices and stuff. I still love him. You know, I yes. still pray for him. 
I still have love for him. A, That's a, 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 it. That's a, a, you know, pure love. love. Yeah. 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 Don, tell us, uh, finally, tell us about your uh, Back to Christ movement a, bl a little bit. Uh, Back to Christ movement, I believe uh, it's, 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 it's not a movement about me. In as much as uh, many people say, no, if you, you, you are not in Christ, it's true. I was not in Christ. And in as much as it speaks about my journey, but this is a, a movement that seeks to say, guys, there are a lot of other pastors who are living in darkness like me, but they are in denial. You know, mm -hmm. there are a lot of other pastors who are living the life that I used to live, but they're in denial. They don't want to accept the truth. So I'm mm -hmm. saying everybody must go back to Christ. It is time for us to go back to Christ. You know, any time from, from now, the trumpet will sound, you know. And when the mm -hmm. trumpet sounds, Jesus is coming back. He's coming back for his bride, you know. The groom is coming and is coming for his bride. He is not coming for a bride that is divided, a bride, you know, that is not in right standing with him. So I'm saying... It is time for us to go back to Christ. According to uh, uh, Matthew chapter 6, verse number 33, that is our main scripture for the Back to Christ movement. Now seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So that is the main scripture, that whatever that you need, you don't need to go for one-on-one -on -one for you to receive blessings. You don't need to pay money for you to receive blessings. You don't need to... Uh, 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 a, 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 be, be uh, uh, paying things, uh, paying for this for God to bless you. You don't need to be uh, buying anointed materials for God to bless you. You know, right. you can have a personal encounter with G when Jesus was hanging on the cross. The Bible says the veil was torn into two pieces, and now we have access into the Holy of Holies. It is mm. no longer like it used to be back in the days where it's only the priests, the high priests, who have access to the holy place. Now, even mm. us, we also we also have access to the holy of holies. You can pray by yourself. You can have a one-on-one -on -one with God. You can talk to God at a personal level. So that is just basically about uh, the Back to Christ movement. Let us go back to Christ. Let's go back to the beginning. Let's go back to that old-time gospel where we used to climb the mountain to go and hear from God, where we used to live with a, you know with a sincerity in terms of serving god hmm. yeah. jay i just want to say thank you uh and i want to uh as we bring this to a close we're going to pray but i just yeah. want to say i want to apologize mm. me personally okay. if i have anything that has uh, hurt you if i've come across yeah. the wrong you know on my platform some of the stuff i wrote uh even in the course of this interview mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm. i want to apologize um uh, and know that it's coming from a pure heart you yeah. know uh, like you said whether i like it or not you're my brother now so i don't have mm -hmm. a choice mm -hmm. yeah, you know yeah. I, I i want to apologize i want to apologize because i love you uh Thank you. and even maybe there are ways i misunderstood you you mm -hmm. know um i want to apologize for that and know that i'm praying for you and I want you to know that we we are hoping that your life would be a testimony, a bigger testimony than it is right now. Amen. You're one Amen. of the few that came out of the other side of unrighteousness and really is vocal. A lot of people come out of there, but they're not vocal. True. They're not True. going to educate and teach people, you know, and really speak about darkness the way you're speaking about darkness. Mm, mm, so, mm. You know, I just want to say thank you for doing that. And for the so many people who are watching, you know, I just want everybody to really continue to pray for you, you know. Thank you. Um, thank you. Thank you. And 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 just and just say, you know, God will bless, you know. Let me just say it in, in pidgin English. Do you understand pigeon English? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> God bless you. God Amen. Amen. God bless you. God Amen, God. my brother. Now God Amen. Will, Amen. Will walk with you. Amen. Nothing, nothing will come. You know. Amen. Amen. That's my prayer for you. You know that God Amen. will have you. God Amen. will. You know, and I want to leave this finally, this scripture here in First mm. Peter 1. 16, 16 it says but as he as he who is called you is holy he also mm. in all your conduct amen because amen which be holy for i am holy, holy god is calling holiness jay god is calling mm -hmm. us to holiness. amen you know? amen and let's just continue to pursue that and I just want you to take, I know you are a preacher, so don't take a long time. I just want you to take one minute. So please take one minute. 
One minute, <laughs> pray for two things, mm. right? Pray for two things. Pray for people who go to church, that God will mm. open their eyes, that they will be continue to study scriptures for themselves. Amen. Amen. And pray for people who are, who are still in the same position where you were, mm. where they came for fame and money, where they're going to the wrong places, that God would deliver them. Mm. Pray for our friend in Canton. Pray for our, our friend in Pretoria. Even the angel, mm. in, you know, just in one minute, just say a short, straight up prayer, please. Let's mm. all pray. Father, I thank you. I give you praise and I give you honor. Mm. I thank you, Lord, even for this uh, wonderful opportunity that you have granted us together with all the viewers who are tuning in from all over the world. I pray, Lord, that you touch them in different ways wherever they are, for distance is not a barrier. I yes. commit them, Lord, unto, unto your hands. And I pray for your power to be manifested over their lives. In the mighty, progressive name of Jesus Christ. Father, I commit those who are in bondage, yes. those who are living the life of unrighteousness, yes. those who are living a lie, those yes. who are living a life of greed, a life yes. of deception and manipulation. Father, yes. I commit them unto your hands right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Father, I call them by name even as I pray right now. Yes. I pray, Lord, even for Prophet Bushiri uh, yes. from Pretoria. I pray yes. for you, Berenjo, who's in the UK. I yes. pray for Alf Lukau, who's in Santin. Father, I pray that you touch them wherever they are right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, touch all the other pastors who are living a life that is not pleasing to your, to your, to your sight. Touch yes. them, Lord, from wherever they are watching from, from all over the world. Touch everybody, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, so that they may come to the understanding of the truth and they may come to a place of understanding your, 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 the gospel of the truth. In the mighty name of Jesus, set them free from any bondage. I pray for all those who are tuning in. Father, touch them in the mm. mighty name of Jesus. You know them by names. You know them by situations. You know mm. them by conditions. I pray, mm. Lord, that you touch them in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. I pray for my brother Solomon, for his work that he's doing. I pray for protection over his life. Protect him, Lord, in the mm. mighty name of Jesus. Grant him more and more strength, wisdom, and knowledge, even to mm. walk this journey. As tough mm. as it is, but Lord, I know that with you nothing is impossible. I thank mm. you and I give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. And stretch your hands. We pray over J Israel. Amen. Official name, official name, Jacob Dube. Father, amen. we com we commit that this transition, this change, transformation that has started, will not stop until the day Jesus comes in the name amen. of Jesus. Amen, amen, Father, we pray that you will change him inside out. Mm. We pray that you will give him, oh Lord, grace. Amen, 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 amen. From his past sin, from his mm. past affiliation, in amen. the name of Jesus. No temptation will overcome him in the name amen. of Jesus. Jesus, uh, guide this young man, lift him up, O oh Lord, with your grace, uh, protect him, provide for him. May he Amen. not depend on his wisdom, but may he depend on your wisdom. Amen. Father, we bless you and we commit Jacob Dubey to you, Lord. We cannot take care of him, only Amen. you can take care of him. And Amen. Father, we pray that the gift that you've given him, the grace that you've given him, will continue to bring healing and truth over our land, from Durban to East London, from East London to Cape Town, from Cape Amen. Town to Johannesburg, from Johannesburg, back home to Bulawayo, across the Amen. African continent. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Brother, Amen. I want to thank you. I want to... This is like a two-hour conversation. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I want to say thank you. Mm. Uh, you don't know what God is using do this to make. I'm not trying Amen. to make a video. I'm not here to mm. make a video. You mm. know, uh, I'm not here to get likes. I'm not here to get clicks. Mm. So I'm here for the truth of God. And you carry the truth of God, which you've shared. Amen. Amen. Everyone who's watching, if there's one thing you would continue to do for him, is to pray for him. Amen. Change and repentance. And going back to God is a process. Sometimes Amen. I want to see it faster than where you are now, to be honest yeah. with you. That's why sometimes yeah. I post the stuff that I post, because mm. I feel like you, know, you should, you know, 
But let's continue to pray for him and others like you. There are others like you also that are yeah, out there. Yeah, uh, yeah. We need to continue to pray for. We're one body and, and we love each other. And I just want to say again, thank you so much uh, for coming. I really appreciate it. And we would definitely continue to pray for you and would continue mm, to stand. Mm, Any last word from you before I shut down? Um, no, thank you so much, uh, Solomon. I really appreciate it. Um, I thank God for your life. You know, uh, my prayer is that everyone can get to understand, you know, the great work that you are doing in the kingdom. And I want everyone to understand as well that in as much as we can have these agreements in terms of uh, different things and different opinions, but we remain brothers in Christ, we remain brothers in the body of Christ, we are serving God together. So I just pray for the peace of the Lord and I just pray for unity, even in the body of Christ, as we are standing against injustice in the church and against all these things that uh, you've been addressing and that I've been addressing over uh, over the past uh, a few months. So it is my prayer that uh, God can continue to use you. And uh, yeah, I love you with the love of God. Thank you. And God bless you. And thank you everyone for joining us today. Remember Amen. you can watch this. Uh, we're going to put it on uh, on YouTube, on my YouTube channel, Solomon's Temple. You can go there and subscribe just so when I put it on tomorrow, you can check it out. And you can mm -hmm. share it also. This is a great story. Uh, you okay. know, you can share it. You know, people would get to, to you know, to, to be delivered, get to learn something very new. So thank you so yeah. much. God bless you. And uh, Jacob Dubé, thank you. <laughs> thank you, bro. Thank you. <laughs> God bless, bro. Thanks a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you so and much. Good so night, everyone. And have a wonderful, wonderful rest. Thank you. Thank you.